guys. Welcome to the show. My name's Tyler. And wait, where's my co-host? Oh, there he is. Hey, there's Austin. How you doing? There I am. <laughs> um, there I welcome, is. Welcome, everybody. I am very glad you guys are here. We're continuing our live in July celebration um, in our you know, quest to raise money for breast cancer. We decided that we were going to bring in some new faces, some old faces, some similar faces, and bring them in, talk about film, talk about things we love, and do that all while whilst doing something good and then raising money for breast cancer. I'll uh, put the link in the description. If you don't mind donating, if you have a couple extra bucks, uh, it would mean a lot to me. I lost my mom to the disease uh, three months ago. So, you know, we got to do this yesterday with Owen. I uh, got a great start. Uh, and, and I just want to thank everyone, as always, for contributing. Uh, you know, we do it for you and we do it for the culture. Uh, with that being said, I think this guy's been a friend of mine since I was... 10 years old or something like that what uh, yeah without even knowing it he was a friend of mine um <laughs> I grew up watch, watching rocket power watching jimmy neutron oh uh, well, all, yes, all yes, those yes. shows right so watching all that kind of stuff uh you know I, I grew accustomed to to those to those people being around me so with that being said how you doing gary there we go what's up guys let me get that banner out of your face <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I really do appreciate you coming on. I really, I really, really do. I appreciate you guys for having me. Seriously. You've been in some, okay, speaking of like long rap sheets, I mean, we've had some people on with some, you know, quite the, the backlog of, of, of stuff they've appeared in. Uh, you've been in the Cosby show, mm -hmm. rocket power. Uh, I mean, a lot of animated stuff. Um, yes. And then you just recently did Batman the long Halloween. How was, um, I mean, how was the, we'll start with Batman, but I, I really want to work my way back. Of course. So how, how was, how, when you got the call to do Batman the long Halloween, what was that like? Speaking of long, I mean, that was, it was a <laughs> long time ago. It was, it was Whoa. insanely, I was, I was under a very strict NDA for, it, it will be the fourth year now uh, coming wow. up. Um, so that was very long in the process that I had to keep quiet about that and, uh, man, it was it was crazy just getting, um, you know, not having to audition and just having the the, the casting directors and uh, Wes Gleason love him and, and and just say, hey, we we really like this guy and we really want him to play this this brand new character uh, in the DC universe. I mean, who who wouldn't jump at that? So yeah. uh, as soon as my agent called me, I, I was like, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I it was it was an insane experience uh, just. Uh, to become part of a uh, superhero universe, uh, which has long been a dream of mine. Hell yeah! I mean, if if, if anyone called me and was like, "Hey, I want to be a Batman," <laughs> right? Yeah, you don't even really have to say any more words. I'll just, I'll yeah. be, I'll right. be yes. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> so I, I mean, I, I honestly, I'll be honest, I haven't watched part one yet. Um, I had, a, I've had a lot on my plate. Wow. Uh, I know, I know, I know, and. Uh, well, it's okay because I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it all the way through, so it's okay. All right, yeah. See, if you're in it, through. you haven't. seen I it I just all the came way back through. from vacation, and it was waiting for me. They sent it to me, um, so I am about to sit down and watch it for sure this week. <laughs> are, yeah. Wait, are both parts out, or is it just the first? No, part? just one, just part one. Yeah, I, I, apparently, I'm the only one who's seen it. I, I, oh gosh, you guys got to watch it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, so, can you say what character you play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I can. <laughs> uh, his name is Lieutenant Pierce, and uh, he's a, a, a new lieutenant working uh, at Gotham PD. And uh, basically, he's a tag along. He rides along with uh, Lieutenant Gordon and uh, Batman through the night to help them, you know, sort of, uh, you know, solve these uh, these crimes uh, going through uh, the night. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's like a dream of mine to play. Man, yeah. To play, to do anything. <laughs> do anything. Would you, uh, that's exactly what I said. I was like, honestly, you could tell me I'm doing crowd walla and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, being a real quick, obviously, was there any, any, uh, any favorite Batman DC comics or anything, you know, that, that you were like, oh man, you know, that, that <laughs> stood out for you and that you kind of referenced to and in going into this or, 
Yeah, I mean, I actually have uh, a couple of uh, original Prince of the Nightfall uh, run. Um, yeah, so um, I actually, uh, I do have a, a, a pretty, I, I won't say it's like extensive. Uh, I'm not a comic collector because there's some right. people who really can take that uh, title. Uh, but I, I, I do well, well for myself, I will say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a couple of those. Uh, I love that. I just love um, you know, Arkham being just bust open and, and having Batman just try to, you know, figure out the best uh, tactical way to take down all of his villains at once. Um, you know, yeah. The Long Halloween is also a great, you know, a great run. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah it's just yeah, lots of great, great rogues story. gallery in that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, I, I mean, Batman has so many great stories uh, that are that are told throughout his his history. So uh, I'm thankful to be a part of one that uh, that popular. For sure. <laughs> would you ever uh, would you ever consider doing like a live action, uh, like being in a superhero? Or have you ever thought? I mean, I'm sure it crosses everyone's mind these days, like yeah. working with these big studios and you know you getting know, these big contracts. It's and, so funny because that answer. I mean, had we done this show maybe even six months ago, that is a different answer. Um, I kind of really just decided on. You know, I was really like sitting here and I'm like, do I really want to be a part? of that you know and really sort of at this stage in my career um you know i'm celebrating literally today is my 30th uh year acting um i i literally hey. my first time filming uh me myself being filmed on set was 30 years ago to date so um wow. yeah it's that's um couldn't be much, that you. much older than that though, that's, right? amazing. that's amazing yeah i was i was literally i was um i was, was three and a half yeah okay um, i was gonna say he was two when he said yeah, i was three and a yeah. half on the set of the cosby show that was the first time i was wow. ever filmed for uh for television so yeah um i just really decided i'm like at this stage you know um that is uh that is a, com a completely different undertaking, I feel, you know, than uh, right now where my mindset is. Um, I'm sure. really, really, you know, if, if I were to take that and mold it into voiceover, you know, if you say new Marvel uh, animated show and uh, or or maybe even new DC animated show starring Lieutenant Pierce, wink, wink, right. um, you know, <laughs> I would jump at it. Um, I'm really feeling voiceover. I'm really wow. just uh, loving that world, uh, and I have been for a long time, and I think that it's 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 important to go um, where you love and where you're comfortable and where you have a passion for. Uh, and right now, that's that's uh, that's me. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, dude. Uh, well, real quick to to ask, kind of segues into some questions that I had um, mm -hmm. as to, you know, obviously, what do you find? You know, being the the biggest challenges in, in each, in in voice work, and then in in actual live acting from the camera, uh, acting. You know, what's right. and for you, what what kind of led you to you know now say voice voice acting is where where I kind of want to put my focus. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's a, that's the perfect question to lead into that answer because it really the cons do really sort of support my decision to sort of lean into voiceover. Um, you know, the cons of one camera, you know, uh, for me, uh, there's not many. I love acting, you know, with all of my being, you know, um, yeah. so it's really uh, not something that it's like, oh, wow, I absolutely can't stand it anymore. Or I've <laughs> completely fallen out, fallen out of love with it. It's not that right. at all. Um, but really, one of the cons is, is that you do have to be on all the time, you know, yeah. um, and uh, for me, yeah. uh, again, right now where I'm at in my life, I just uh, I've kind of built up this exterior where I'm just like, I just don't want to if I don't have to. And, you know, and it's just it, and it's just really just totally. taking care of me, you know, right. You know, I've been. 30 years, I've worked every single year of my life, um, um, you know, and so as as soon as I started acting, I haven't gone a year without booking a job. And so for me, that's, you know, um, a testament in, uh, in longevity, and I can't really ask for much more. Um, so to, to really say that, um, you know, um, there's that kind of con, you know, that's that's really easy for me. Uh, and voiceover doesn't have that, you know, I get to right. kind of come to the booth in my PJs and, <laughs> you know, uh, and, uh, and, yeah. and, leave and, you know, um, and, you know, I record every now and then, and I get to sort of be sort of that uh, unsung hero in the shadows where, you know, I get to watch as people 
watch a, a animated show that I, I I'm on and, you know, have that huge smile as they tell their kids, Oh, I love this cartoon. You know, I've, have, you know, peers of mine, friends of mine that are now showing their children rocket power. And yeah. that is, you know, there's no, there's nothing that really kind of matches that for me. So, <laughs> you know, uh, with so cool. right now, so <laughs> that's kind of where I'm, why I'm leaning, I feel towards voiceover. Those, those benefits um, far, far outweigh any cons in voiceover. Yeah. I mean, for, for me personally, I mean, rocket power was, that, that was, it was like the cool hip show. Like, yeah. It wasn't it, like it, it had, of course it was a cartoon, but it was like about cool kids. And I mean, with the exception of technically your character, I suppose. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but, 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 but that's the, that was the cool thing about it. I think it showed, it showed a different type of cool kid. You know, um, right. I always say that there has rocket power really existed in a bubble. Like there, there was nothing like that and nothing around that ever really touched it you know it just was that sort of microcosm that you know it just existed in its own world um and yeah it it's um it's really cool because you had you know the the normal cool kids and then squid you had you know i say this about him you know he's my first character that i ever voiced you know and right. um you know for that is he's always holds a special place in my heart because i resonated with him i was that i was the smart kid that did want to be you know athletic i was athletic and but it was just like i was so smart the athletic kids were like nah yeah. you're not really like like us you know right, <laughs> so, right, right, right. Like, uh, you know, so, um, you know, I definitely had that that feel and I, I always will. So, um, yeah, it was about that that kind of every kind of every kid, cool kid, you know, and yeah. so that's why I loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I might have been a little I probably was a little young for rocket power, but yeah. but I, I remember and I very, of course, obviously, uh, what, Jimmy Neutron. Mm -hmm. I, re I remember getting the VHS, you know, having that, you know, having fair, watching fairly odd parents. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, those, those shows are, are for me. Uh, that was like, I think probably fairly odd parents out of all of them. And there's a huge fairly odd parents, like, following people love oh, yeah. that show. No, like, they, they, they are cultish. They, yeah, they they, I was going to say, I didn't want to say Trust it. me, it's, it's that's insane. Just, no, um, that show's still on? It's it just no. ended. It oh, just, yeah, just, yeah, it just ended like not too long ago. It was, yeah, it was. Uh, I think it did an eighteen-year run. I believe Woo! I was I was on it for sixteen. So wow. um, it was it was somewhere in that range. Yeah, I was on for sixteen seasons. So it's um you know it's it's really uh, a a great show. Um, and uh, the the meshing with Jimmy Neutron, you know, the crossover Dude, episodes those were, were the best. Oh awesome, my gosh. You know? so, As a Kid. Yeah, to be a part of that was great. You know, um, having that crew come into the booth and you know us have a great time. That episode took forever to film because we were literally just goofing around the whole time. Wow. <laughs> it literally, usually it takes us maybe thirty minutes to an hour for an episode. Literally, those two episodes took all day. Like, wow. all day. so <laughs> now usually with that one, with I would think with the recording process, it's usually like. Are you usually by yourself or usually like working with the other actors through a different yeah. or voiceover varies. You can uh, very often be by yourself, um, but uh, with a lot of animated shows, they like chemistry, right? So they will put certain people in the booth together that need to have that chemistry. So for instance, Rocket Power, the four main characters, we usually record it together and then everyone oh, else, cool. you know, separately. And then um, for uh, Fairly Odd Parents, it was um i believe it was the uh, fairies timmy uh the friends and uh crocker uh at all times and then sometimes um uh, gray oh, okay. who played vicky she would sort of come <laughs> she would sort of come in um but yeah it was really it was really cool clifford the big red dog which i did was sort of an yeah. anomaly because we actually had everybody in the booth at one time and it was uh we we recorded in this huge almost like orchestra uh, room. Um, That's what and I just picked. Was, wow. Yeah, and yeah. it was it was insane. I mean, that was yeah. literally to date the only uh, animated show that I've recorded like that. And uh, yeah, it was just it was awesome just to have everybody there. And that was another star-studded cast. But um, yeah, it was great. Does it? Wow. Does it? I mean, because uh, a, a lot of people would think like as you get older, you kind of want to transition right into like mm -hmm. more adult themed. 
yeah. uh, adult themed acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't know if, if that's a real thing. You're pretending to be someone. Right. Uh, when does right. that ever? When does it ever matter who you're acting or you're pretending to be? But um, did do you like do, do you like that atmosphere? Do you like making the, the shows for children? Is is it something that that's brought you pride and joy? Along Definitely. The years? Yeah, definitely. I, I think I'm I'm a I'm a natural teacher, um, and I think that um, through the years I've been coaching uh, voiceover a lot, and so for me, yeah, for me, it's um, it's definitely uh, a part of it, you know, to see that, you know, like you said, that pride um, uh, taking into that uh, into the, into consideration. That definitely is a huge part of it. Um, the transition, you know, to more adult things. I actually did. I, I did that. I. When I was, I believe, 18, um, that's when I booked Bring It On All or Nothing. Uh, and that year, also, I booked a film by the name of Noah's Ark Jumping the Broom. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a film in the LGBTQ uh, space. And um, my mom literally was like, OK, you got to make a decision. You know, do you really you know, want to go, go down this road? This definitely is some, something you haven't ever touched before. It's completely unlike, you know, anything that you've done, um, you know, just letting me know, you know, what that, you know, all entailed. And I, I had multiple conversations with the director, Patrick Ian Polk, uh, who, you know, of course, you know, um, sat me down and, you know, talked about the community and talked about, you know, my want behind wanting to portray uh, someone who had difficulty coming out to their parents and things like that. Um, and so all of that was, you know, a huge thing at 18. And, um, you know, so for me, um, after I did that, I also did a film uh, also directed by Patrick by the name of Blackbird. Um, after mm -hmm. that, my, my agency at the time uh, hit me up and they said, hey, um, we don't necessarily like, you know, where you're going. Um, so, you know, uh, either you don't take this Blackbird role or, you know, we can part ways. Um, and they, they, they pretty much were just like, you know, yeah, I feel like, you know, you, you know, you're choosing to be in a certain space, uh, the, the LGBT community and, you know, we don't want to pigeonhole your career. And I was like, well, I've only played one other character in that right. space. Um, and my, meanwhile, I'm now a 16 year plus acting vet and I've played a nerd like eight times. You haven't said anything yeah. then, but yeah, you know. yeah. um, so wow. for me, um, that was the time that was really the fork in the road. And so um, I left that agency and I was without a theatrical agent for about seven, seven years. Um, wow. And, uh, and I was simply, you know, getting just offers and doing shorts and things like that. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was, that was really the decision, you know, as far as the deciding to do, you know, the more adult things, you know, I feel like they still felt because of my look, <laughs> And because of what I was normally used to doing, um, that it was, um, you know, out of my wheelhouse, you know, or right. you know, something that would have derailed my career or, you know, something in that sense. And, you know, um, and, you know, I, I applaud them for trying to do, you know, what they felt, you know, was best. But that's not what I felt was best at the time. And, you know, as as someone who was trying to take the reins of my career at the time and I was and I was really going through it like a crisis because I was really sick of playing the sort of kid roles and the, the teenager yeah. and best friend at the time. And Bring It On was great because even though it was sort of same in that sort of Disney-esque wheelhouse, it still was a little bit more adult than I was used right. to. You know, it wasn't quite Disney. So that was something that was welcome for me. And I also did that film with like three of my friends. So I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't, uh, I wasn't right, right. At, all, at all pressed uh, to not do that. Um, but yeah, I think that was really it. And now I think what it's about is I've done that, you know, I've, I've had the very adult roles and I want to continue that. Um, but I do yeah. also want to, again, you know, really lean into voiceover and I do get a, um, a sense of pride being an adult and being mm -hmm. able to still provide children, uh, you know, that, that sort of sense of awe, because I still get it. I still watch animated projects. I still watch the on camera things and have that sense of awe. And I, I feel like as an actor, I think that that's the number one thing we have to continue to have is that sort of sense of consumerism, like oh, yeah. be a consumer and, and watch things and be impressed and be wowed and, and, and feel that as a person so that when you're acting, you know exactly 
what you're shooting for. You're you're yeah, you're absolutely. trying to have the those people feel the same way that you did. If you're not a consumer, you have no clue how an audience feels, you know, when, when you're performing. So uh that's that's really what I like to lean on. That's that's really kind of what I've taken a stance on as far as my direction of my career right now, for sure. So, yeah, yeah. So I I so the 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 first time, well, it wasn't the first time. It was the first time that I knew of that I found you was you had tweeted about wanting to work with Zack Snyder. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's really how this came about. That's so yeah. Cool. yeah. So wow. I, I, we uh, were all really big, really, really, really big Zack Snyder fans. Mm -hmm. And so did you did you watch the Snyder Cut? Of course. I'm, I'm sure, right? <laughs> yes. uh, what'd you think of it? Absolutely loved it. Better, better than the uh, the theatrical. Oh, yes, I, I, it doesn't exist to me. I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's my man. I love, love it. Uh, but yeah, I um, I um, I am a big, I am a big fan of uh, of Zach. I, I I loved that he was able to finish this. Um, I think that as a uh, performer and entertainer and someone um, who works in the space of production and writing. I know how it feels to have a project like split and like ripped away from you. You know what I mean? And it's just yeah. like, uh -uh. and I'm nowhere near on the scale or level that Zack Snyder is at. So when in that space, so I can't imagine how it would have felt to have a project, you know, really had to just sort of cut, you know, from you and, 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 and no circumstance uh, from you, you know, no, yes. nothing from, you know, um, your, uh, detriment, nothing that you uh, caused, and it just uh, it was really fun to to really sort of see the joy kind of in that project. Mm -hmm. You can definitely see, you know, the the difference, you know, in in the yeah. project. I, you know, my girlfriend who is just sort of getting into the sort of superhero space and stuff like that, she watched it, and the fact that she could tell the difference, you know, and she's right. just like she hasn't seen any of the backstories and all that yeah. stuff. She's just like on the edge of her seat and she's like i would have never thought i would have sat through a four-hour film <laughs> like that's so awesome. i just did so um yeah we both loved it and i think a lot of people had that reaction it's like yeah. i can't because I, it, it, it doesn't even feel like four hours not at you all know what i mean not a, not really it's a um, it's a it's a lesson in pacing for sure it's a it's yes. a, it's a it's a masterful lesson in pacing and a lot of people already felt like you know oh wow the original the theatrical cut it lagged blah 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 and i feel like you know, Zach, people forget he's a storyteller, you know, and, and I think that um, it, when you really sort of have storytellers, if you give them room, <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it's it's going to yeah. it's going to happen the right way. So I think that finally he was giving he was given room and uh, and we saw the result. Yep, exactly. Um, <laughs> sorry, I live near the airport. So if you can I can the hear the air. Right. So I, I thought it was Austin, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah. Usually, you know? it's, it's uh, sad sometimes, but it's all right. Uh, cheaper, right? Right, right. You know, cheaper exactly. <laughs> I came here. It, well, it's funny. I'm actually down the street from uh, SoFi Stadium. Uh, okay. The oh. thing, so the new, the brand new Ram right. Stadium uh, that's going up. So I'm literally on the same street. I'm on the same street. I can take a bus there. Yeah. Um, so it's um, it's it's just not. It's not near the airport. We're just right on the the landing path. You know, when they come into LA, you know, so it's like it's right in earshot as they start. <laughs> like, they really have a ways to go. Like the airport's still a 15 minute drive for me, at least. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's just, I don't know. They're, they're loud sometimes. <laughs> no, no, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Um, they, one sec. So this is a little, and I, I, I knew we were going to touch on it, but not, I don't want to, you know, linger on it too much. Oh, yeah. No worries. Um, it's just, it's really, relevant because because of he's you know he's back in the news mm -hmm. um so bill cosby's getting out of jail um mm -hmm. or he's being released from prison right. uh for america like literally the united states maybe even some people across the world um when this happened it felt it was like a everyone it, it could have been anyone else and and no one would have batted an eye but because it was bill cosby he's america's dad and uh, th this can't be true. Yeah, it had that like Michael Jackson effect almost. It was like right. people people chose not to believe it because of <clears throat> what he meant to them already. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Now I know you you're at three, so maybe it's not the same. But did that feel any different because of 
your interactions with? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, I even on the day, you know, I, I felt that it was a difficult day more so. I mean, not the release news. Um, I've long, you know, as an adult, long removed myself from people or things that just don't benefit me uh, in a sense. And I think the the idea and the the set of the Cosby show benefited me. But, you know, as of right now, he does not. And so I've just right. sort of pressed him out of my mind. Um, and so for me, um, it was harder seeing the reactions of right. people uh, than it was hearing the news. I was the, the news could have been blasted anywhere and I would have been fine, but it was more so seeing people um, who I uh, respected uh, opinions and, um, and uh, people who I sort of look up to sort of uh, give um, their unwavering support and, you know, uh, things like that. And it just, um, for me, regardless of your stance on it, I think that there's a time and a place to know when to speak about certain things for other people, you know? And, yeah, sure. um, if, and so I think that there was a lot of, uh, celebrities who chose the very wrong time to, you know, show their, you know, support. And, um, I think that, you want to show support, text the man, <laughs> you know, you know, right, uh, right, you know if that's right. what, if that's what you have to uh, do. I don't know if he's getting texts in prison. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> you know, and that, well, there you go. That's who you associate with. So, yeah. um, you know, and so for me, I think that that's really, um, you know, a lot of this is performative and I think that people have to take away the performative aspect because a lot of people get hurt. You know, a lot of people are getting hurt just simply seeing the news um, and your well, retweets and stuff can't be worth it <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Maybe yeah. this is, maybe this is pushing the line, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I figured why not. Um, what do you, do you think he should be let out or no? Oh, do uh, that's right. Oh no. I mean, I know I don't. I, okay. I think that, um, I think that, you know, obviously people go, Oh, justice is justice. And it was a technicality and whatnot. Um, but, we only want to sort of applaud those technicalities when we feel that it benefits us. Um, and yes. we would be screaming um, over other technicalities, you know. Um, yeah. There was a mother who um, I believe wrote a different address on her, her, child's, um, uh, her uh, child's application for school. And once the school found out, she, um, I guess, got sued from the school oh for fraud. God. And she's in, she went to jail for five years. Again, that's that's a real thing. That's a law. That's a rule. That's a technicality. Yeah. Should she yeah. be in jail? You know, uh, and in that case, we'd be screaming, no, no, to technicalities. No, you know, and right, so right, right. Um, I think that, you know, it's really just, um, uh, yeah, for me, it's a it's a complete no. I think that um, there needs to be um, a clear cut um, idea on how justice is played out in terms of these sideways deals that a lot of celebrities kind of get when they um, get arrested. And, uh, yeah. and, you know, the, the whole idea that I can make a deal with you to not do any jail time for these kinds of crimes um, is just beyond me. Um, when yeah. we have people who are literally, you know, uh, you know, in jail for absolutely nothing, you know, right. um, and uh, it's, possession. Yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so. uh, not, uh, not that you know, not to bring it up. I know it's kind of a weird topic for a lot of people, but um, it's definitely relevant, and it's definitely, you know, it's it's it it, it is in our wheelhouse. I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's not not in our wheelhouse, and and I just uh, you know, it it, it just very much shocked me. It, it put me a little. I was just like kind of befuddled, like. I, I yeah, no, it was. It was yeah, I saw it. I didn't really believe it either. I was like, "What?" <laughs> it it like, seems huh? like a PR tactic, honestly. Yeah, like it, it seemed really, like a really fake does. TMZ post at first. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, "What? Who did this?" <laughs> <laughs> but no, you. But you're so right. It's not even funny. Um, let's get into some more lighthearted stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you were also on. Now I don't know how long you were on, but. Even Stevens, mm -hmm. so did you you get to work with Shia LaBeouf, huh? Yeah, I did. I did. I was really, How, really well. That's that's back when he was considered what normal. 
I I, like no, that. no, no, absolutely, <laughs> not. <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, and in the best way. And and you know, it's so funny. You know, a lot of people always think I, that's in a bad way, but it's in the best way at that time for mm. sure. Um, yeah. We are only, I believe, four months apart. Uh, in age oh. uh, of some sort like that. Yeah. So we were thick as thieves during shooting. As soon as I got there, he had already been close with, uh, with uh, uh, the guy who plays AJ. Um, yeah. Uh, and so it was just really, uh, no, wait, his name is AJ. Am I tweaking? I don't know. I'm too old for this. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, his, um, his, his, his sort of, you know, camaraderie with, with, with him was already sort of set in stone. So then I come into play and we were just, I, you know, it was, it was really fun. I was 14. So, you yeah. know, being on a Disney show at 14 is like, you know, being at five in a candy store. So um, it was, <laughs> it was fun. It was really, really fun. I, at the time I tell people all the time, Shia was a genius. Um, he rarely had his, his lines, uh, written. Uh, really? in the uh, yeah. yeah, most of the time uh, we'd get yeah. the script and a lot of his dialogue would be blank. So most of the time, whatever you see filmed, he's, you know, on the fly. Even he's, at that you know, age. Even at that, uh, yeah. Yeah. Especially, he actually made, he yeah. made a movie called Honey Boy, actually. I know. Uh, yeah. that you, should, you should check it out. If, yeah, about his dad. Yeah. Yeah. About, and apparently it's pretty true. Like he, he does stuff like that in the movie. He knew his lines. He was super professional. All this no, yeah, yeah. Stuff. I mean, yeah. and yeah, he's 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 a, a ball of energy. You know, at I'm all the biggest child about at all times. But you know, he definitely he definitely Still. was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. he's he's uh, he's a very he's got a lot uh, that he has to deal with. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the parent situation, what you yeah. saw in Honey Boy. You know, it's is very true to life. You know, we yeah. we all saw it and we all experienced it. So, do you? Um, wow. Yeah. Do you keep in touch? Uh, I haven't in a while. Um, yeah. We were supposed to last have lunch. I believe it was like three years ago, like a, about a year or two before the pandemic. A friend of mine had actually sold him uh, a car, and uh, and they were like, "Oh, you know, I saw Shy and sold the car, and you know." Um, you know, uh, they, they, I guess, dropped it off and, uh, you know, they started, I guess, talking about even Stevens. And so they were like, I know Gary. And he's like, oh, my God. Oh, so right. um, so we had actually set up uh, a lunch and then it never, never went through. So uh, that was the last I had heard from him. And then everything kind of kinda snowballed went down, after yeah. that. So, yeah, um, yeah uh, it's unfortunate. Man. But, you know, um, I yeah, mean, he, he's doing a, for, at least from what I hear, he's doing a lot better now. Uh, I mean, yeah. he's got the. He's got the. Um, he opened like a, a place where young act or young aspiring actors can go and kind of stretch right. their muscles and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of Shia LaBeouf. I always have been, and uh, mm -hmm. so I kind of follow his life a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> not a creepy way, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I'm, I'm invested in it in Shia. No. All of the Shia, Shia LaBeouf stand accounts on Twitter are actually run by Ty. Everybody, so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, 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 well, because I, I mean, I, I've had my own issues with addiction and, and, and sure, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So, you know, he, um, I always felt just connected to him. Yep. Um, yeah. in, a, in a way. So, yeah, that I mean, so even Stevens was a, it was a great project. I mean, I, I that it's kind of funny because like it's like you came with me from my childhood. <laughs> and then when I transitioned, right, into, right, a little bit of more of an adult theme, right. So then, hey, you with you, I was, I was with myself. I was, <laughs> I was yeah, yeah, right. As I went along, yeah. <laughs> um, but what what's been? I know. So, I feel like I ask this question every single time I, I talk to someone, and they can never answer it. But do you have a favorite project? I know you said the the Rocket Power character resonated with you, but do you have right, a favorite I, project? Yeah, I would. I would say. Uh, I can do favorite on camera and I can do favorite voice, uh, right. favorite animated. Uh, favorite on camera is a sort of a tie between Blackbird and Bring It On All or Nothing. I had the most fun shooting Bring It On All or Nothing. Again, I, it was three friends that I had already known prior to filming. So, you know, imagine linking up at a job that you got offered right. with three of your best friends and you're right, like, right. God, what are you doing here? This isn't so like, work. Yeah. And then, you know, three months, you know, of, of that, you know, uh, you know, as you're filming a, a, a movie is uh, fun. So, yeah, that I had the most fun on. And then Blackbird, just because I think that I learned the most uh, about myself as an actor uh, through through that mm -hmm. uh, project. That's uh, and so I had uh, a nice journey down there in Mississippi uh, filming, <laughs> filming that for for two months. Um, and then favorite uh, VO. Um, 
is probably fairly odd. Uh, I just, you hey. know, AJ, yeah, AJ is uh, just, yeah. uh, he's just a, a character for me that I'm always proud to, to, you know, to really boast about, you know, um, him being, you know, in that universe for so long, uh, black, you know, wealthy, smart, you know, um, still cool is still able to sort of you know be in the circles he, you know it, it was just a fun character to play i never felt left out butch hartman uh the creator just did a great job at you know having that character be someone that people could be like oh my gosh aj you know like yeah, he's not yeah. the main character but you knew exactly who he was when i said it and um so yeah it was just uh it was a great time i loved loved that project and the the cast uh, was absolutely amazing. I haven't learned more on a project um, when it comes to just the technical aspects of things, um, mm -hmm. you know, than 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 fairly odd. I mean, you have some absolute masters on that show, from Tara uh, to yeah. Gray uh, and um, Carlos, uh, yeah, Derek, Tom, and, uh, Tam, you know, Tom Kenny's and Tom Kenny. Yeah, on Tom there. Kenny. Uh, you know, I mean, I just uh, I I just am always so blessed because I'm always. I feel like I'm always that one person uh, on a set, like, or, or on a, or especially in VO, where I'm like, I get in these spaces and I'm like, who? Like, what? Like, why <laughs> right, am I right, here? Right. You know, I mean, Clifford was Cree and John Ritter, uh, Kel Mitchell, uh, you know, um, and it, it is just, you had uh, just amazing people. So uh, I absolutely love Fairly Odd because of the experiences. There were so many people that came through the doors. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, that one had a lot of guest stars too and stuff. It was very much, it was, I would say, I would say probably next to SpongeBob. It's like, yeah, it's it's up there. It's, it's, it is. The the next and usually thing. it's more noticeable than SpongeBob too because yeah. a lot of the times they have like whoever's guesting it's just the fairy version of them you know so right. exactly exactly yeah. yeah that's awesome but you know obviously you had uh you had fairly odd parents and then was uh was Rocket Power a part of Nickelodeon I can't remember yes it was Nick okay. um, yeah. yeah so those were my two Nick um, I also did Samurai Jack. Uh, yes. Um, saw yeah. That. I saw and, that. And, yeah. Um, and uh, I believe Fillmore was Nick too. No, that was Cartoon Network, I believe. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, you know, Nick and I have a great relationship. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. I was gonna say. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. So um, you know, I, I, I think that being a part of that and also being able to be a part of a a major uh, Cartoon Network show as well was was just uh, a blessing. So. Yeah, I can't. I can't complain. Uh, and they were right, they were like right down the street from each other too. So it's like wow. in the bank, we're just like <laughs> dip, dip, dip between these two. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, you know, I when, I think one of the obviously like people always talk about like the hard thing about voice acting and stuff is that you know obviously you're not really seeing anything. It's all in your head. You're, but I, I feel like that's all. It almost makes it a bit easier because you can be over exaggerative and and be you know. A little bit, yeah. um, but I wanted to ask you. You know, a lot of times, sometimes they'll have the the animations already played and and running for you. And sometimes, mm -hmm. what do you find to be? Is there a one that you find easier, or more more easier to voice when you're watching the footage play in front of you, or when you're just kind of reading the script and, and going off? Uh, yeah, reading the script definitely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't want anything in front. Of, I want to see. Like, I would love to see a reference for the character. Uh, I would love to know, obviously, what I'm voicing if I can, yeah. but um, any animation after that, keep it. I want to, you know, I want to go, <laughs> you know, just full on, just into the script. I don't want any restriction in my head thinking about, you know, double, you know, d um, what do you call it? Um, not double thinking, but uh, overthinking, you know, um, over analyzing movements or something like that in my performance. I don't even want that. I just want to see the line and just whatever my instinct is, I want to just go. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Who Who's the, and I, this isn't to make it about anyone else, who's the, who, a lot of actors, um, you know, we think from a, our perspective, it's like, oh, they never get starstruck. Have you ever been starstruck before? Oh, definitely. Again, I told you, I'm a consumer. Yeah, so yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm as much of a, a, a peer in, you know, in this as, as everyone else. So um, I, I definitely have. I think I was like maybe, whoa. So four, 13 or 14, 
and I was at the TCAs, the Television Critics Association Awards here in LA. And it was um, it was just they were just premiering new shows and 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 stuff like that. And um, I was yeah, I was thirteen. I met Tyra Banks uh, that day, and I was just like, oh my god. Um, I was at um, the Kids That's Choice amazing. Awards, my second Kids Choice Award, the one that we, the one that Rocket Power won. We actually won that year. Hey. Um, yeah, and I met Halle Berry, oh and I was god. just like, I'm fat, <laughs> starstruck. I mean, you can't uh, get any better. Than yeah. That. yeah. Um, so, um, and then you know, I I absolutely definitely. Um, have been, you know, starstruck meeting a lot of the musicians and stuff, you know, because even though it's entertainment, it's still not like my field, you know, of entertainment per se. I've dabbled right. in it, but it's not like, you know, so anybody music wise, like I've met people who like literally, like there's this uh, this rapper. Oh, sorry. Also, they're still setting off fireworks. Is that a gun so shot? randomly, if you hear a firework, <laughs> all right, right, think about it. <laughs> um, a but yes, yeah, so, outside his house. Right, exactly. No, seriously, they're they're literally all over. Like kids still have fireworks around here, so they'll just light uh, them on the corner. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, when it comes to musicians, there's this rapper um, named De Cools that is on. Uh, he's uh, he's really good, and I think he's out of. Philly, I want to say, um, and um, he's really good, and he's on Instagram, but he acts like, like, I'm like, like, all over it, like, I'm like, man, like, I listened to him on Spotify, and I finally found him on social media, I was like, dude, like, uh, I love your music so much, and I'm freaking out, and he's like, he's like, has like, not really a lot of followers, he's like, bro, like, I'm like, nobody, I'm like, no, you don't understand, like, when are you having a concert, <laughs> like, I'm there, yeah. like, you know, so I'm, I'm that guy, so when it comes to music, I'm, I'm definitely starstruck over everybody. I just saw uh, Childish Gambino uh, uh, during the, like right before the ca- the oh, pandemic, ooh. I saw his last show at the forum. Um, and so, yeah, that was a great show. So yeah, yeah, I, I, I love it. Anybody, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, you work. I'm, I, if, I, if you're in something that I love, I'm gonna be like, oh my gosh, I love you. Like, it, that's just how I am. I, so, I mean, yeah. I emailed, so I, I emailed Will Smith. Nice about, about coming on, and his agent answered me, and I, I was, I, you know, I was beside myself. But his agent right. even answered me. <laughs> right, so I yeah. couldn't even imagine if if, if I was face to face with him, I, I just, you know, what if yeah, what I just you, talk, agent, you, know what I mean? you never know. The agent might have shown him the email. Hey, that, 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 you she know, was like, it, "Yeah, he's busy working on the National Geographic documentary, so yeah. you know, we'll have to pass it this time." And I was just like, "You don't even worry about it." Right, right. <laughs> this this was it. enough. He's, an, he's another uh, great. He's another great uh, performer that I've that I've worked with. Literal uh, show. Um, yeah. I, I was six. Fresh no, Prince. five. I was five when I did Fresh Prince. Um, so yeah, that was that was. A, he's another great one. Uh, Wait, wonderful. I, I went through your whole IMDb. You did Fresh Prince. I did yeah. do Fresh Prince. Yes. What? I played Young yeah, Carlton on Fresh Prince. Uh, what? Yeah, <laughs> come on, dude. Come on, yeah, dude. Uh, it was a flashback episode. Um, they went. Come on, back that would have been in the thumbnail. All right, that would have yeah. been in the thumbnail had <laughs> I seen that. That would have been in the thumbnail. You, you're right. You kidding um, yeah, me? Yeah, no, that episode is actually so like it's so crazy because so I'm in a weird the set like, of Fresh Prince is ab- like iconic. I mean, yeah, the, yeah, not, oh, no, not it's, just it's, the it's, sets, but the. I mean, the story was like revolutionized. Everything. I know it's sitcom style you know, a sitcom style show, but what that show did was yeah. incredible. Incredible. Oh, no. Seriously set the pay. It really paved the way for shows like my wife and kids and stuff like that. Like oh. all of those really followed that mode. Um, but yeah, no, it's weird. Cause I'm part of this weird inception um, when it comes to like fresh prints oh, and, um, and family matters. So I did an episode of the fresh prints where I played young Carlton. Right. And so, then after that, I did an episode of Family Matters where I played Richie's best friend. Yeah. And in an episode of Family Matters, there was a time where they surprised the father uh, who played on Family Matters, Reginald Bell Johnson, with uh, the father, uh, James Avery, from Fresh Prince walking <laughs> through the door. Um, so it was really odd because I had played his son, right, right, <laughs> wow. and yet he's walking through the door in this show. So, 
I, I, it's so weird that I'm part of that moment and that I literally did them like a year apart. It was, that's, I, I did Cosby Show, Fresh Prince, Living Single, and Family Matters uh, all before I turned six. That's all you need to say to anybody ever. <laughs> that's yeah, it. I know. Like, that's yeah, it. Well, yeah, and what's your resume again? Oh, yeah, French. Yeah. I really do. I give you a tremendous respect uh, Thank you. for that. Uh, I mean, was it hard being a child actor, though? I, for me, I, I look at it this way. And this is, the, this is no disrespect to you, of course. Yeah, no. um, I find it hard to, to get behind that, um, putting a kid through that. You know, they're pretending to be someone else before they know themselves. Mm. Uh, did that make anything harder on you growing up? You know, it's funny that you said that, and I think that this is – probably the only reason that I, I am doing it is because I, I it's funny to say that I did and you no one is going to believe that but right. when I tell you that my parents were absolutely sick of me reading everything in the house and writing on everything in the house I mean at three and a half I was I was testing at almost like literally eighth grade reading level right. which is yeah you know and and it was just one of those things that they were like please like do let him do something, let him find a passion for something because he needs to be out of the house at least, put him in sports or whatever. And like literally they tried to find everything at the same uh, exact time that I was put into um, you know the acting world. I also was put into the dance world. I was professionally dancing. Um, right. I was, yeah, I was, I was really uh, very close to going on tour before I was actually doing uh, the Cosby show. Right. So I think it was one of those things where um, they felt that it was something that I truly chose. You know, it was something that I That's truly better. wanted to do. Um, I did, you know, point to the, t I was the kid who pointed to the television. I want to do that. My mom goes, oh, what, you want that toy? No, I want to be that boy, you know? And it's like, right. well, that's different, you know? So, and for me to to know that and to tell them that that's what I wanted um, was uh, was a different thing for my parents. And I think that it wasn't difficult for me because it never... Um, it never became one of those things that uh, I lost sight of why I wanted to do it. You know, um, mm -hmm. it was always a passion, but I always knew it was a job. And I think that if any time you have a child actor um, and your tribe, your parental unit, your team, whoever's behind that kid, keep that balance you really can't go wrong. And if you really tell them, you have them understand the values of actually living life. And right. once this goes away, you know, then you really can't go wrong. And that's always what I was, what was instilled in me. My, my folks. And again, my tribe was like, listen, this might not be here all the time. You're from right. the South side of Chicago. You know, we don't normally make it out. So when it comes to there, you make sure you have everything set in a row to, to survive, you know? And so yeah. out acting, I was, I was on even Stevens holding a regular job, you know, I was, I was, I was working, you know? And yeah. so, and for me, it was, it was a pride thing. You know, I, I saw uh, kids uh, my age, I saw peers my age move out at 16 and go broke by 19. You know, and, crazy? And, you know, and literally, you know, for me, I was just like, I don't, I want to do that you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, not, I, right you know i feel like not a lot of actors can say that they they have never not worked you know so even yeah uh, sure even I, i'm very lucky you know i know i'm not a normal case at all you know because there's so many uh actors who were in my demographic that you know aren't working you know or yeah. who had to choose a different path you know per se so i'm very thankful for that even for sure. during the pandemic i mean you yeah know, uh how did life change for you when the pandemic started? Because because you're a voice actor, uh, we're really good friends with Ray Porter. So I mean, yeah. he also does voice acting yeah. in the uh, audio books and stuff like that. So I mean, he literally has a studio in his house, right? That he, that he works from, and so really, nothing really kind of changed for him. But uh, not everyone's that lucky, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So so how did you, how did you adapt and how did you um, change for the pandemic? Because Acting is one of those things, or, or you know, this this business is one of those things where it's hard. It's, yeah, it, it's hard to make a living when you're stuck in the house. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I mean, you know, for me, like you said, because I had been leaning more towards voiceover, uh, oh, you, you know, at, at the at the sort of, you know, uh, the last few years, it 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 didn't change as much 
as it could have definitely <laughs> you know yeah, I, yeah. I was for the most part before the pandemic i was doing a lot of coaching so for me it just kind of just that increased you know as soon as the okay. pandemic hit then uh instead of auditioning and being sort of out there more i was inside teaching more you know that was really the the first change and then you know obviously just getting used to the pandemic sort of audition process has been a change you know i'm used to, i'm old school so i'm used to going into a casting director's office and it being like uh you know oh well we have this set up here and you know this is how you're going to do the commercial da, 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 and then you're in and you're out and now yeah. I'm doing all of that. Right, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I'm setting up lights, I'm doing this, I'm wow. building things, I'm like, huh. You know, so I think that that change is definitely uh, different for me because I'm not used to that, you know, but it's uh, it's it's been a learning experience. It's, I think, definitely something that's made me uh, stronger as an actor just to know, you know, things to do, you know, in that sense, certain things to set up if I do need a self tape in some way. Now I feel very confident to do a self tape because we've all had to do them, you know? Exactly. So uh, I think that that's really, um, you know, a, a thing that's the, been the biggest change for sure for, for the pandemic. And then I think also the types of projects, content has changed, you know? So yeah. That's to me, the biggest thing um, we saw a lot happen to life during the pandemic, you know, um, especially those first six months. So I think that everybody just took a step back and was like, what are we watching? You Because know, then we had time to like sit down and watch everything. And we're like, this is not good. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. People were talking about Tiger King for about yeah, eight months. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, yeah, it was really just, I think, that realization that we have to be better. Uh, we yeah. have to be different. We have to be varied. We have to show people in the light that they would like to be shown in, not the one that we feel that they deserve, you know, all of that, you know, I think that really sort of changed. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the biggest thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, um, kind of going back, cause you mentioned too, and you mentioned right now that, you know, content's changed. Content mm -hmm. is, is like, you made a great point earlier in that, you know, and I love that you still love working on kids shows and you still love it. And but even kid shows, right, have like evolved. Like, dude, I watched Star Wars: The Bad Batch. I know it's a kid show, but I cry I, I every time. Don't episode. say anything. <laughs> like, I'm sitting there. Though. I'm like, I know it's a kid show, but they're making these now where it's like, I'm. I can obviously I don't have any kids, but I, if I were an adult, yeah, I'd have my kids sitting there right with me. We'd be watching as a fit, you know. Um, but also then you have this kind of new form of of animation and, and like the the anime and uh like what invincible and invincible is this right. like <laughs> completely different so obviously what do you you know coming from kind of more of the family friendly world and stuff what do you what do you see as as the as the benefit of shows appealing more to a to an adult audience or especially in animation well i mean uh, what i think is it's not just the content that's that's sort of going and evolving, it's also the children, you know, we, we're not, you know, the kids today are not us at all, exactly. you know, are, are yeah. not us as children. The, the things that they uh, are, are seeing and able to take in and process is a lot different um, than yeah. us. And we have to understand that. So I think content has to reflect that because the more and more you try to sort of pigeonhole um, children into only, you know, being that sort of green, you know, -ness, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, yeah. say, um, I think that we really, it's detrimental. It's detrimental to the education of children when they're going to school and they're seeing so many you know, adult things and being thrust into so many situations where they're like, uh, I don't really want to go home and watch Ben 10, you know, you know, they're, they are looking to see something like Bad Batch with emotion, with characters that reflect how they feel. There's care. There's kids who aren't just happy go lucky kids these days. There are kids who yeah. really deal with a lot of emotional anxiety and seeing people, um, uh, you know, characters in the Bad Batch, you know, that reflect that and reflect their attitude, reflect how they feel they want to see themselves. Um, a thing that I always tell um, to be parents 
uh, is to watch The Matrix because that whole aspect of Neo projecting his self that, or, or um, sorry, Morpheus telling Neo that The Matrix is the projection of what you feel you know it's so important to as a parent to think about with a kid because it's always comes into play like that's just the projection <laughs> you know yeah. but that's that's yeah i don't know that's that's, that's me it. what'd you say that's, that's a good way to look at it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so kaden so asked kaden asked what's your dream role or someone that you'd like to work with Man, um, I say my dream role is to again play. Um, I did it once in a short film. I played Langston Hughes, um, okay. but I would like to do it uh, in a full length, uh, either film or television show. I love poetry. It's always been a big part of me. I'm a writer, so um, I, I've long uh, loved, um, you know, just um, you know his career. And I think that playing him, I think Jesse Smollett is actually yeah. now apt to right. play. Yeah. play him and something else it's not a biopic I, I believe he's a part of another uh film that has an ens ensemble cast of of sort of uh black uh sort of renaissance type characters um mm -hmm. but i'm not sure what the title is um but yeah i would love to do that again and for me um more recently gambit um it's so funny because a lot of a lot of people have <laughs> sort of brought this up and uh gambit has always been a favorite character of mine and um, I've always said, you know, he's, he's, he's Cajun, you know, um, and my family, uh, is, is Cajun as well. And, uh, my mom's, my mom's family is from the eighth ward. Uh, and so, so for me, just playing a character that, um, has not quite been represented how a lot of people see him, you know, uh, in comics. And, you know, it's so funny because I always talk how they gave him the personality you know, sort of of a Louisiana <laughs> sort of Cajun black man, but it just doesn't look that way. And right, right. Like, when you hear him talk, it's like, wait a minute, that's not supposed to come out of that guy. <laughs> that's such but, a great, that's right. so cool. Yeah, oh, so, man. you know, from, from what my family, you know, that most of the men in my family look like Remy, you know, um, you know, they're redhead, sandy brown hair, you mm -hmm. know, um, and, you know, look like him. So I've just long wanted to sort of represent, you know, uh, Remy or Gambit in that way, um, just as a, a kid from, you know, New Orleans. I mean, my family's from New Orleans and Chicago split evenly. So, you know, I would just hope to, you know, like I said, represent that well. I just got to get my accent right. down. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ready to start campaigning for that game. I, uh, they already I, have. I, so, there was a hashtag like a couple I, of weeks ago. I, 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 sure I, I'm I bringing it back. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm trying to get an artist. I'm trying to get an artist to do like a little mashup, you know, uh, of my face. Get the logic to do it. Gamut. That would be awesome. Yeah, there you go. Um, we get man, boss logic to do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what's crazy? Um, he followed me uh, not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, and like yeah. I this is like chatting back and forth with him about uh, because his um his uh oh, his okay. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle poster with uh. He's got the, it's like from the side and it's like rain coming down. I like hit him up and I was like, um, I like, that is like my favorite. Like I love TMNT so much. Um, and so I That's love That's one that you art. could do like really yeah. well. Listen, I was this close. Uh, the, the new TMNT on Nick, I was, I was, yeah. I made it up really close for that. It was so funny. Cause I think it was a lot of scheduling uh, conflicts with that as well. But uh, man, I would have loved to play Donnie. That's my, that's my guy. <laughs> that, and that, now the Nick one is that's a is that the Seth Rogen produced? It's going to be Seth Rogen produced. Uh, I'm not sure. Is it Seth Rogen? No, no the there's Seth one Rogen that's on there already, already. I believe. Yeah, that's the. Uh, oh, okay, okay. The, yeah, it's yeah. it's already on there. It's been on there for a while. They they're actually oh, wow. uh, number one, I believe. On Nick yes, right now. Seth Rogen's is it going to be live action? That's oh, oh. he's the, the new live yeah, action. The new set. live action. Oh, okay, because, good. Because hopefully the, he does it right. Hopefully he does it. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, you know, I I is. is People like to complain about everything, right? Right, right, right. The Michael Bay Ninja Turtle movies, they weren't that bad. It was when four, you talk to the different, cast. Four different audience. Yeah, when you yeah. talk to the cast, though, yeah. <laughs> you realize that they weren't treated that well. Gotcha. They, they weren't. Mm, they, gotcha. The, the main cast, too. I'm not talking about extras. Right, I'm right, talking, right. I'm talking about the the cast like oh, yeah. the turtles i can imagine i can imagine. I hear, I hear that often yeah. and you know that's another director that i hear a lot of crap about that's that i CGI usually one, apparently. Right, yeah, yeah i usually defend him um okay. you know I, I like i defend his style i defend his choices i don't defend his his style of directing 
or you know yeah. stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, okay? I think in that aspect, I don't think he did a bad job. I think it was for it was very clearly, hey, this is not the TMNT that you guys grew up with. We're making this for kids right. who want to experience this now. Uh, and they did a perfect job if that was the the case, you know, right. um, because like I said, it, it gained a legion of new fans. I mean, the Turtles came out in the 80s. There's nobody that's under the yeah. age of 25 that really should know what that is. <laughs> but right. there's legions yeah. of kids who know what Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is. They did their job. Yeah, and yeah. it had Megan Fox. No big deal. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Can't go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the gambit I mean, thing I just think is so. I can't get my mind off the gambit thing because I listen, it, you know, and I got and my hair is long now, so I can, you know, I, I can just put I can put the the band right up there. It's you know, it's perfect, yeah. perfect. So. Well, and I think too, right, is is you make a point too as far as the history of the character in the comic, right? right it's it's kind of like it should be, you know, a, a black guy from Louisiana yeah. and all that. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know, it reminds me kind of like what Snyder did with Aquaman, you know, is he right. kind of took that. Exactly. You know, the the makes water more and, sense. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. I mean, you know, just the fact that the way Remy's life is, you know, uh, being a thief, being, having a scrounge on the streets of, you know, New Orleans and all that, it just, uh, like you said, it makes sense. It fits, it fits that demographic. And that's the thing is that a lot of those stories we realize now were, I guess written in a way where the instinct was there, but then once it got to a certain level, it's like, can we make this character all the way black? Uh, right, yeah. Okay. Exactly. You know, gonna make all the sales. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. Well, yeah. let's uh, <laughs> let's tan him up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, you know, we realize that now, but now it's we we have the ability now to really sort of portray these characters, like you said, with with Aquaman, to show that sort of representation. Like, hey, we can yeah. we can sort of. Show show um, this demographic that's this long forgotten demographic because the Polynesian culture and film and TV is practically what non-existent, right? right. Um, yeah. you know, and yeah. so for, for, for that, I was very, very proud. I love, you know, that The Rock, every film that he does, he's inputting his culture into it. You know, that's, that's what we need, you know, um, yeah, especially yeah. When, when it's not shown that much. Do you, we spoke with um, Owen Gleibman yesterday. He's the chief film critic of Variety. And um, we so we started to talk about it a little bit um, with. Do you think that the um, the blockbuster movie, mm -hmm. the Marvel movie, the you know the big budget film, do you think that's hurting cinema, or do you think that it's um, helping it? Or uh, I don't know if it's helping it, but. What do you, do you, what's your take on that? What do you think the current state of Hollywood? Absolutely not. It is not, not, not. Blockbusters, big films, big budgets have existed since film has existed. The right. big name, the big budget, the big film. The moment that film was created, filmmakers were trying to figure out how to go bigger and better right. since, yeah. the dawn of, since the dawn of cameras. What is hurting is the blockbuster that treats audiences like they're stupid. That mm. is what hurts our, our industry. Okay. And I think that once we forgot how to make a film big and bombastic without, um, without dumbing it down, I think that, that that's really where we started faltering. You know? um, and I think that's, <clears throat> it's, um, it's not necessarily just a superhero flick problem. It's not. You know, it, it happened um, across the board. And it wasn't it wasn't really superhero flicks that started it either. You know, um, I think that it just was a, a problem that trickled down as we started. Run, well, I won't say we ran out of ideas as, as the powers that be that let ideas happen, stopped running out of imagination <laughs> because the ideas are there. They're plenty. Right. Um, mm -hmm. We see them all the time in short films and fan projects on YouTube um, you know, they live and breathe there. And I'm so thankful that we do have social media and technology to allow those people to have that that breath of life there. But I think that what's happening now and what we'll see is the regime change right now. What we're seeing is, you know, back in the golden age, we had this problem as well where there was that one type of blockbuster. There was that one type of film, you know, that just kind of made it up to the top and that was it. Right. You know, well, you couldn't think about anything else. And until the people who gave the accolades for those films sort of ran out of power, 
that's where it stayed. And so that's what happened. And that's how we got the fresh breath of the breath of fresh air in the eighties, you know, when, when the right. action, the budding action star came about and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, and, and, um, and now that's what we're having right, right now. We have superhero films as the, our predator and our terminator <laughs> and all of that. And we're going through that shift change where the powers that be are just where they're loving that because of course it's making them success. It's making them uh, known and it's growing their business. Um, and it's also getting them accolades. Why? Because they figured out the formula that if you make it big enough and, uh, and, and spray paint it with enough sheen that it doesn't matter, you know, uh, right. whether or yeah. not it tells yeah. the story that you need to tell it as long as you give a plot device to move it. Um, nice. And movement, movement became more important than quality, um, and so that's why you see a lot of these films. the The key is a universe. The key is a yeah. the key is a sort of branching uh, storytelling. And so for me, I, I I love that we are slowly but surely getting back to um, blockbusters that are actually you know they are entertaining and smart. You know they are oh, yeah. there, and I think that if we keep going in that direction, we will see. Uh, a change. Uh, superhero flicks will sort of relegate back to where they were, I believe, sort of in the early 2000s, where they were that nice thing that we could kind of escape from every couple of months, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it was just that cool thing. And it, not, it wasn't a staple. It wasn't something that we depended on um, for our movie going experience. Right. That was a long answer, but I'm sorry. Yeah, so, no, 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 no. It's okay. Cause but so do you think Hollywood needs to incorporate the big budget film into the awards? Cause, cause we talked about this. This is where we got into yesterday is, um, the Academy seems to look past these movies, right? They don't exist in, in terms of, um, what they're looking for. Right. right. Uh, and, and it, there's, no, <laughs> There's there's a correlation between that and a drop in viewership for the Academy, right? Yeah. So no one's really watching those award ceremonies anymore. Why do you think that is? Well, it's because you're not at least considering Black Widow for for best. Uh, Black Widow is not best picture, right. movie, by the way. <laughs> but you you know what I mean? Yes. Um, so they're, they're not, they're not considering. Um, yes. Right. Um, yeah, I. Did you watch there's Nomadland? A 50, there's a 50. <laughs> yes, I didn't. but, but I didn't. You know, but, <laughs> but there's a 50-50 answer for me here on this. I feel like, yes, they should be included. But however, I don't want it to be included off of the strength that um, I feel that. OK, for instance, I always tell people it's harder to act for a green screen than it is for period piece, okay? Mm -hmm. So I would rather give Shia uh, uh, an Academy Award for for Transformers than for whoever won that year. I don't know, it was right. King's Speech or something, you know, and no offense, but yeah. to me, you know, as an actor, being in that position, right. I know what, you know, that what is required in certain aspects. Now, not that's not to say that there are uh, forms of acting that aren't taken, you know, it, as far as, you know, what is, better or you know i i don't know how to how to explain that but you know that's 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 the whole key um but i feel like there's that stigma that an oscar film or an academy award film carries and i think that if you put the superhero genre there both of those things lose a lot of what they've built in a sense um superhero <laughs> films have been the anti right? The anti-Academy Award for the longest. It's because they've been shut out, but now it's almost, they're, they're sort of taking that on the mantle now. It's sort of a thing that they know that they're not going for an Academy Award. They're going for the billions and billions of dollars it takes to buy the Academy. And, and honestly, I'm all for that. And, you know, in that sense, in that attitude. But also, I hate that the fact that there is so many people involved with these projects that deserve that recognition That's that amazing. will never yeah. ever see it because there are some people who feel that if you're on a set and things are blowing up then it's not a real set you know and there are right. people who simply think that way and I, again like i said until that shift change happens which again it's happening now 
It's happening even uh, with executives in certain positions for certain companies. Um, you know, I think that uh, in a couple years, we'll see the difference. We'll see actual um, um, sort of superhero uh, flicks that had the intention of being an Academy Award flick actually get recognition. Hell yeah. Mm. I like that answer yeah. a lot. I yeah. really do. Yeah. <clears throat> so you have the uh, the cool picture behind you. What is that? Is that Bart? Uh, this is uh, Bart. I, I paint. Uh, I started painting in uh, in anime? my off time uh, in, in the pandemic. I did. I did. It's so funny because uh, someone mentioned anime, but here there's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. a my basketball hoop. But there is a Tanjiro there. And, oh, and doing a flame dance there, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> right above my wow. television. Very um, cool. But yeah, um, I I you know I I do paint and it, it became a hobby uh, of mine um, in the pandemic and. I didn't think I could do it. I was just kind of, you know, whatever. And yeah. it sort of became something I was like, you know what? Let me try to practice and yeah. <laughs> be good at this. So Hell yeah. there you go. But um, yeah, that's my, 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 um, I call him Art Samson. So, Art. <laughs> so <laughs> I like and, it. Uh, all of, all of my paintings have really funky names uh, to them. Uh, not funky, but there, there's never sort of a name that sort of just like, oh yeah, that's, that's that, you know, I always have yeah. something sort of, I, I like to sort of be a street artist cause um, I've started sort of selling them and all of that. And so putting them in people's homes, it's really cool. And I always want people yeah. who have an original to be able to like have some cool story behind it. So they always yeah. come with, yeah. you know, a, a cool name and a story. You putting any, uh, <laughs> you putting any uh, NFTs in those? Everybody has been telling me about this. Yeah. So I'm just like, you know, I don't know what that means though. So right. <laughs> yeah, so I, it, apparently I it it's like digitally, if yeah, I do this, then I could sell it, which yeah. right, right, right. Then you I'll like em sell embed it. a crypto coin into it or something. Right. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'll slide it in the back. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Demon I Slayer. Gotta, oh, yeah. You said yeah. Demon Slayer? Uh that yes. movie just did tremendous numbers. That movie was yeah, amazing. Movie. That's why and it was amazing. Sorry, movies sorry. like that yeah even like the animation but they're making it made 20 million dollars you know so you know yeah i would argue that not even necessarily just the blockbuster but even that animation has the audience enough to you know you also also i'm sorry to go off on this tangent it's not really a yeah. tangent. it's no, perfect for it. with, the, with the conversation but you know what also what what industry needs recognition um then it'll open the door for everything else once once the video game industry um, that was my next question. Actually, Good, really, um, you know, because there are there are honestly better things happening in the video game industry cinematically uh, than oh than God. in in most anime and and film and TV. Dude, um, and and and, and not only not only is it better creatively, but they are also reaping the benefits better. You know, a lot of people don't yeah. know that the video game industry is the number one grossing you know, industry, you know, um, you know, you have games like GTA that are, you know, at, at, at in the billions of dollars in revenue, you know, um, they're, they're and, geniuses, they're geniuses, right. you Those know, guys. and so, <laughs> and so you have, you have something like that. And I think that once, once the stuffy heads realize that stories, um, stories don't have to be sort of pigeonholed into, um, how they're told. You know, yeah. um, and I think that mediums need um, sort of more recognition. Um, and so, you know, now we have what's called new media, even in in our Actors Guild. And I think that that is a step in the right direction. I think that once you start sort of writing these sort of things into contracts, it starts becoming more real. It starts to become more real to the people that hold the power for accolades and money and things like that. So once that happens, I think that now we'll start to see, like I said, that shift change and maybe we'll see a video game get, you know, a, a, a sort of a category in Academy Awards, maybe best uh, CGI cinematic, you know, or something right. of that nature, you know, and I think that it, if, if that happens, you know, there's so much, there's so much. And again, there's so many people that you're <laughs> opening the door for. Um, I watched recently the God of War documentary um, oh. and it's fantastic and oh, the, video the amount of work yeah. um that those that creative team put into that <laughs> game um any any production house in the entertainment industry would be lucky to have those people um and and so that's that's what i say that the the academy needs to realize is that we have to stop thinking that the academy says one type of film deserves an award 
um, because yeah, exactly. because it, it looks so different. There's so many different people that watch these things. So it's only right to, to understand that there's so many different types of things that those people are watching. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. with, the, with the advent of the, I mean, especially with things like what the Mandalorian's doing, right? Right. The Mandalorians like took, they were like, okay, there's something that's working with these, this video game stuff. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and really before that, it was, it was really honestly Netflix taking the chance on Marvel. Yes. It was them saying, we're going to make Daredevil, you know, and Jessica Jones and, and Luke Cage and all of these shows. And, yes. and, 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 and regardless of whether you thought they were good or not, it was really just the idea that, we could have these comic book shows seen in this light that it wasn't that even that they took themselves too seriously. It was just, it was just good television. You know, there were so many, so many great moments uh, in those shows that really sort of, I, I, I just love the fact that they felt so free as far as creation wise. And I, yeah. I really think that um, if the Academy took the time to really sit there and be like, Hey, you know what? They're doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like have even, I think the problem lies, and I didn't want to say it, Tim, but people like Owen Gladman, who are the chief, right? He's not even just a film critic, but he's the chief film critic for Variety. He looks at superhero films as, he calls them popcorn films, right? Yep. So it's, it's like he's putting them, he's not degrading them. He said, you know, because uh, I don't want to talk bad about him. He's not a yeah. not. That's not what I'm doing. Well, you put it in a different box. That, it's, but, it's but it a, shouldn't be. It's, it's right. what, Who's to define what cinema is? Cinema, exactly. for me. And, and, but he has a problem with the fantasy industry. Mark Scorsese. That's who. Ta- no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> look at him when, selling out know, with Netflix. It, so when people like that, a lot of critics don't realize even those films are fantasy. It's fantasy. That's what we do. We're all Film is fantasy. fantasy. It's yeah. all fantasy. Your fantasy might look different than my fantasy, but it's exactly. still fantasy. Scorsese is fantasy. Godfather is the most epic gangster fantasy ever written. You know, you know I, when you look at that. It takes everything in me. Like yesterday, I was like squeeze. I was this. I think you can't tell, but I'm like squeezing this, talking <laughs> over. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. But it's a, it's like, no, no, no. I don't. It's, I don't go to the movies or I don't go to to watch films because I want to see no, no offense Austin. I don't want to see Nomadland. I don't hey want to see don't I don't do want to I don't want to see it. I don't. I, I could walk <laughs> out my door and and see that kind of stuff. I, I go to the movies. You got Nomads looking at your house, dude. I didn't know you got it. You know what you I mean. Hold up, hold Relax. up. Hold up. Wait um, a minute. <laughs> but but I but I go to the movies to to escape to 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 be a part of something that's bigger than myself, right? To to experience something, I maybe otherworldly, right? They don't look like me. They don't talk like me. Um, <clears throat> I, I, that's why I go because I want to get lost in a story. Uh, and and yes, I, I just I agree. Nomadland. I agree that comedies and dramas and um, all those films they deserve to be theatrical. They hundred percent. A comedy in theaters is just as good as superhero movie in theaters, right? Yeah. Um, but I think both are important. I don't, I don't think one outweighs the other. Uh, and that's where I differ with him. Uh, yeah. And that's a critic. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, because that's it, a critic saying this, these things, but, but that's, but you also have to remember <laughs> even in the beginning, again, in the beginning of this, that's what it was, you know, as soon as, as soon as cinema started, we had variety. As a matter of fact, that's how cinema actually started with a variety show <laughs> like literally yeah. before you saw whatever thing that you paid your nickel to see you saw a variety show mm -hmm. and and so that's literally what was incorporated we we were built off that it wasn't just that we were sitting down to just watch that one drama thing or that one funny thing it was supposed to be a show it was meant to be entertaining period you know yeah. um and so i think that that is also to, to remember when that happened, we had people in the newspaper that their only job was to critique that show. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so critics, they can't help but to resonate with one thing or another. You know, it's in their nature. It's literally for, for me as a, and, and again, I've been on the journalism side of writing as well. I wrote for LA Youth, which was LA Times' youth paper. It's now defunct, 
But um, I did that for a couple of years. And really, that was the one thing that I noticed. It's like you really are just choosing sides. It's whatever side you want, but you're just choosing a side and you're choosing a side (laughs) to write about. And so for me, um, yeah, that's what I say is just I, I can't be that. I can't really sort of put cinema or put accolades on one type of art when there's so many different types that speak to people. Um, you know, and yeah, it's just, uh, I think they all deserve, you know, and, and that, that's to say that that's not to say that those things don't deserve recognition. They deserve it too. But the things that you say don't, you know, or aren't worthy of it just simply because, you know, of a budget or a demographic or, you know, an adaptation. Yeah. It's not, that's, that's, that's bogus. <laughs> any, uh, um, any guilty pleasure movies for you? Oh, I have plenty. <laughs> I have so many movies that people tell me I shouldn't like that I love. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like Zack Snyder. I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, so, uh, well, uh, speaking of, one of them uh, is uh, Sucker Punch. Uh, actually. Sucker Punch? Sucker Punch, actually. I <laughs> uh, That is a guilty pleasure movie mm. for me, for sure. I, I think people, I think Sucker Punch went over a lot of people's heads. It did. Um, and, and a lot of people will still argue up and down to their blue in the face that it didn't and that it's it's still crap and blah, 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 blah. But I think that really just the expose of of sexual assault there uh, for women, um, I think is unrivaled. And to, to me, to put it into the uh, to the to the story that they did to wrap it in the way that they did was just kind of cool. You know, again, it doesn't for me. I'm not thinking, wow, this is a masterpiece. I'm just looking at it like this movie isn't even for me and I'm enjoying it in this way. You know, oh, wow. You know, and then I talk to people and it's so funny because to me, Sucker Punch honestly didn't become that film until I showed it to another woman. And uh, uh, she was really taken aback by it. She absolutely loved it. She's like, I wouldn't have watched it. Everybody told me this movie sucked, so I didn't watch it. <laughs> but it's like one of her favorite films now because she said it's, she's like, she also acknowledges, yeah, it's not a masterpiece. It's not the best movie of all time, but I love the message that it got across the way that it got across um, and the effort yeah. that it took to do that. You know, I think that a lot of people sort of are amiss with that, that those actresses also took a lot of time training for something like that. And mm-hmm. they knew what kind of story that they were telling. So I, I know I was on the set of Blackbird um, telling that story, which was pretty a pretty difficult one to tell as well. So yeah, um, yeah when I saw that, I was like, man, I love it. Um, but yeah, Sucker Punch, um, Scott Pilgrim. Uh, people for uh, some reason hate on Scott, Scott Pilgrim, Pilgrim right now. Him. I don't know why, but I love that. Um, I think it's a fun movie. I think Again, visually, I think it did things that no one was ready for at the time. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that was really good. Um, Edgar Wright, man, I mean, he's just, he's brilliant. Yeah, he's he's fun. He's fun. I, that's another person I would love to work with. I love I love people who like to push the envelope, not because people think it's cool to push the envelope, but because they, they genuinely have fun doing yeah. those things. If you watch Edgar Wright um, and, and a lot of his interviews and stuff that he does, when he's explaining the decisions on, on a lot of this stuff, it's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. And, you know, Especially Baby Driver, I love what he did with Baby Driver. I was just about to say Baby Driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby Driver was great. Um, and you know what's yeah. funny with me with Baby Driver? Baby Driver still wasn't what I expected, but it it still was something that I actually loved. I I didn't I like went it. The first film. Time. I was like, I was like, oh, I definitely was yeah. thinking something different. But yeah, I, I didn't like it the first time. I, I like I'm very honest. Like I straight up did not like it. And yeah. then I just everybody kept was like raving. <laughs> Watch it again. Like, Did I miss something? Like when, yeah, uh, yeah. So I went back and I watched it. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is uh, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, the first time. It, but yeah, I mean, and that's another great thing too. Is also whenever like, I, I mean, now it used to be something I complain about. Now it's something I love. Whenever something subverts my expectations and in, in, in ways like that, you know. Everybody hates on the Last Jedi. It's a masterpiece to me, you know. Other, oh, you know, it's like, oh. yeah. Oh yeah. Man. See, see, oh, I'm, yeah I'm, man. I'm the other way around. I'm the other way around. I I do not like Last Jedi. I don't <laughs> necessarily now, now like Rise of Skywalker, but I will take Rise over Last Jedi. Oh, 
Oh, no. Now we're getting, oh, now we're getting. That's a different conversation. That's what, oh, man. Yeah, I mean, no. Last Jedi just, just takes everything and just poof, tosses it out. Yeah, the we'll, well, well, really, Force Awakens did, but we're not going to get into that story. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, hilarious. Just, that's just a whole new trilogy, trilogy in, in general. Um, <laughs> but, no, I mean, and now, I did want to ask you, too, because I saw uh, on there, and, and I know Ty is not a big not a big, he's not a big animation or gamer fan. So for me, I'm I'm through the reef. I mean, besides, the, I know Ty watched obviously all the kid stuff when he was a kid. So. Okay. Um, but, I wasn't um, always like this. I wasn't always. I wasn't always. <laughs> right? I wasn't always. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you did some DLC for one of my yeah. favorite games, Fallout. Uh, Fallout. Fallout. Yeah. Man. Fallout Four. Um, was that the first video game that you worked on, or is that is that what other games are? Oh. Or, I mean, I did mostly games for the projects that I was on. So I did like a lot of Rocket Power games. Obviously, right, right, we had a right, lot right, of right. games. Um, yeah. uh, some Fairly Odd Parents games, obviously. I did a lot of CD-ROMs, um, you know, sort of back in the day when I was growing up. And um, But I had never done something that big. That was definitely the first sort of big project that I did in that, in that realm. And yeah, that was so much what's fun. That, what's Which that said? process like? Like, what, so what do you do? Because you say DLC. I don't even know what that means. Downloadable yeah. content. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so it's, a, yeah. it's, it's, like it's, it's like an expansion to right. the to the already released game. Yeah. Anyway, so me and Gary are gonna be talking. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so but, but, but what, what's that? How is that? So is it different than working on a show? Like, it, it, what did you do when you went in there? Yeah. So, so games are uh, infinitely different, even than yeah. animation voiceover. Um, which you would think it would be similar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, voiceover for video games is built on uh, inventiveness and repetition. You know, animation is really sort of about just sort of. Uh, filling out that character and and longevity, you know how how can this character grow? How can you keep this up, you know, for <laughs> however right, long right. the show might run? Where video games exist as this sort of boom, this one shot, this flash in the pan, but you have no clue how. Like to be honest, um, if you ever get bored, look up the picture uh, for the script to Cyberpunk. Okay. Yeah. And um, I just want to let you know, like normally, just so just so you can sort of see, my normal script for Fairly Odd Parents is like maybe a little bit thicker than this. Okay. Right. Right. It's a it's a good thirty five pages. I've got I've got a nice <laughs> bit of dialogue in there. Um, I go in thirty minutes. I knock it out. Boom. We're good. Uh, something a video game, something like Fallout Four, something like Cyberpunk is yeah. just a extensive extensive process that really can wear you down um, if you're not prepared. And so for me, for Fallout 4, um, when they first auditioned me, I, I booked it and then they called me after and they're like, hey, by the way, we're gonna have you- Oh! Yeah, yeah that's the script for Cyberpunk. Are <laughs> yeah. you kidding me? Yeah. No. <laughs> what yeah, is yep. this? <laughs> yep. That's, it's, um, it's, it's that's insane. brilliant. That is a script, so, folks. If 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 you've never seen, if you don't that's know, that's a video. About. That's a that's or, a that's a that's a a, a normal RPG uh, script, video yeah, game yeah. script. If you're um, just which listening, RPGs are most narrative type type games. Yeah, right. If you're just listening to the show on uh, Spotify or or any of those other platforms, uh, look up Cyberpunk script. It's yeah, the first yeah. picture that comes up. It's uh it's blasphemous, is what it is. <laughs> 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 that's what we're looking so, at. <laughs> so, so imagine that, you know, as an actor, you know, just being prepared, you know, to, if your character is the main character, you know, you're in, you're in at least three of those stacks, buddy. <laughs> you know? So yeah, 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 you have to I say mean, things differently. Like do you, yeah. So for instance, so they, they let me know first that I was playing three different characters. So automatically I was like, I was really like, okay, I don't know <laughs> if I can do that. Yeah. But three of those talking. scripts. You um, the work. I didn't have any scripts. I didn't have any scripts before uh, going in because I honestly didn't know it was Fallout till I got I in the even booth. Mail that to you. Um, it was. Oh. It was kept, yeah, it was kept under wraps. Uh, it was under a different wow. name, completely different name. So I booked something. It was like I booked like Desert Runner or something. Right, you know, yeah, I was yeah. like, you know, whatever. Um, and so I got in there, and they were like, "Hey, you know, we want to let you know. We're so excited." Da -da 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 to tell you that it's fallout 4 and i was just like 
oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, 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 yeah, yeah, right. And I'm a gamer, so I'm just like, oh, great, you know. So, 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 um, as you know, brother, like, and, and for Ty, Fallout Ty is like, it's it's famously known. It's gaming royalty. For, oh, yeah. Listen, I'm not an royalty. idiot, huh? Oh, 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 okay. I was about <laughs> to on, huh? this yeah, I man, literally uh, uh, created a pop culture channel. I I know a little bit about a lot of things. A little bit about a lot of things. That's true. But, right, 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 right. but not this much. Right. <laughs> no <laughs> one knows that. <laughs> <much. laughs> uh, for anybody yeah. who doesn't know, they, I mean, I just think whenever I think Fallout, it's right. the one game where you have about a thousand different options. For right. Everything. Now, so, yeah. So, that's, so, that's the key, right? Is that that's what I'm thinking. There's, yeah. So, there's, so, when you go in, all right. So, I'm, I'm Gary. I'm Gary today. Right. right? Yeah. And I go into work. Mm-hmm. And it, you, normally, right, if I'm going to work at like Fairly Odd Parents, I have a script. It goes right. that one way. Maybe I improvise yep. a little bit. Yep. Um, but for the most part, scripted uh yep. for a video game what i always imagined was you had to sit there and be like the and and like and say things different ways right and then they put it all together like you're not far you're not, not far, right um okay. i mean but uh, there's infinitely more dialogue you know there's right. so many uh, so imagine what you just said but with like a hundred pages of dialogue so, so ima- for instance, Sweating I played, yeah, I played uh, three different characters, three vastly different types of characters for that DLC. And uh, for one of them, I played the doctor, uh, Teddy, oh, on, the, on, the, on the island. I'm and- sorry, guys. Uh, something's, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Something's wrong. I got this camera and it has an adapter because it plugs in with USB-C. Ah. The adapter is from must be from like China or something. It's, ah, it's like it's it's fritzing. It's yeah, fritzing. it's it keeps like it keeps like like uh it's like super loose and it keeps yeah. falling out and it's driving me insane because I got nothing can ever go, go can't right. Get, can't get it from Jeff. You can't God forbid things go right. Can't, right? can't get Jeff Bezos. You can't get it. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I, I'm sorry. Continue. I can still hear you. I'm oh no, yeah, fine. you're fine. You're fine. Um. Oh, excuse me. So yeah, you're you're literally just saying. You know, I'm I'm in there and I'm saying. Excuse me. Um, for instance, when the player uh, comes up to Teddy, the doctor, and is selecting things to, uh, you know, for uh, I, I guess uh, to see what the next uh, part of the mission is. There's I remember one part where I had to say, if I want to, if I'm not mistaken, um, it was something along the lines of, "Yeah, it's right over there," and I had to do that. <laughs> I want. I can't. I can't even. I want to say I was doing that for <laughs> five minutes straight. Like literally, imagine like five minutes, and it's literally. It was just like, yeah, it's right over there. Yeah, it's right over there. Yeah. Uh, it's right over there. Yeah. So many different. Right over there. You know, and it's literally, and it, you know, and you just have to, you have to oh be ready Lord. for that, and and you know, it's it's demanding and it's a process, but and it's um, not. It's, and, and the academy doesn't recognize it, <laughs> isn't that right, exactly crazy? all of that work we put? Isn't in. that and, fucking you know, crazy? And, and this is, and I still have yet to do mocap for for a game or, or right. Or, or, have you done mocap at all? I have done mocap before, but not for a project that was released. Okay. Um, do you but, have yeah. pictures of you in the suit? I I do somewhere. I All do right. somewhere. Next time, um, but yeah, I, I, those. you got to have the pictures. Yeah, no, I had yeah. I had the markers. Mine weren't balls. They were like, <laughs> squares. Yeah, yeah, yeah I they weren't balls. And I had the balls on my face. Um, but but it was just like little <laughs> markers. You know, they were just like little squares. And uh, no, it was that was fun. But um, but yeah, no, it's it's a uh, it was it's a daunting process. But games are really cool because it can be something where you're like. You, you get to actually, you know, watching yourself as a character is one thing because you're just watching it play back, but having a controller in your hand and I'm hearing myself. Yeah, so pretty cool, pretty cool. you obviously went and played Fallout 4 and play, right? Of course, I mean, of course, of course. I did. That's so cool, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so um, it was I so just hear- to play myself or to play and, and yeah. see myself in a game because you don't play as my characters, but you get to see them. Right, right. Yes. Um, uh, now, how long did Fallout 4 take? Obviously, with all, all of that, like about how long was uh, that process? That was a 10 hour recording session, I believe. And did they still make wow. you sign NDAs and stuff for, for yeah? Fallout oh. was definitely NDA. I mean, like I said, I didn't know what you it didn't was until name, I yeah. was in the booth. Yeah. I literally, I mean, yeah, got in yeah. the booth, oh. they punched in, and they were like, 
Uh, by the way, uh, <laughs> <laughs> here, you know. Fallout Four. Anyway, go ahead and start reading that page. Uh, <laughs> Hear your beeps. There we go. <laughs> you would, would, it sounds. It sounds like you would definitely do another video game, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was gonna ask, yeah, would you? Yeah. Video games are fun. Um, video games, however, are. Um, for me, I would want. I wouldn't want to do something. Well, I wouldn't say want want to, <laughs> but um, it's not. I guess my goal to do something like uh, like a GTA. Uh, okay. where it's like that super secret project and it's a narrative. Like I honestly would like to do something like a, like an Overwatch or an Apex okay, yeah. where I'm voicing a character that, you know, uh, continues along, has releases, you know, or whatever. And I get to come back in and voice something for a holiday event or whatever. Right. Um, you know, cool. uh, I'm, a, I'm a big Overwatch player um, okay. and, um, and uh, Apex as well. But I'm yeah, not as good on Apex as I am on Overwatch. So, you know. Yeah, but, um, you gotta start a Twitch. <laughs> you gotta start a Twitch, and you you you'd go on. Uh, that you know, everybody keeps telling me I need to. Uh, you know, it might it might be in the plans. You, I may have you know bought a a desk and a rig. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. But uh, well, I got we'll my PS5 awesome already, so you. I might just buy a camera and just hook it on top of my television. Just wait, you you got one of the twelve PS5s that were made. <laughs> I did. You got one of the twelve. Wow. Hey, and I got one of the 20 Xbox Series X's, so we're there. You go. You You guys must have friends in high places, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How is the PlayStation 5? We okay. So we only have one person on our team that has it, right? Okay. Um, how how, how, in comparison to the PlayStation 4? Like I said, I'm not. I'm not a dummy. I've played. (laughs) I've played video games before, but how much? How how much of a change was is it to PlayStation 4? Um, you know, for for me, I'm a I'm a I'm a fidelity nut. So um, I'm I'm all about graphics, visuals, um, you know, um, motion, um, things like that. So uh, this was a big change for me uh, because uh, of motion rate. You know, the capability mm-hmm. to show uh, you know up to 120 hertz uh, is a huge huge game changer um, um, because, um, that smoothness, uh, that frame rate smoothness, uh, really just, uh, adds a level of immersion that is just kind of untouched, um, from Miles Morales. Uh, right now I'm playing Ratchet and Clank. Um, and it's just beautiful. The, it's just really, really gorgeous. It's like playing a Pixar movie. And, um, I think that the PlayStation 4 at the end of its life was giving us that, you know, um, right. it was really trying to push it. You know, we had that, we had like Red Dead 2 and uh, Last oh, See, that's 2. a game I love. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah. Hold on, what, those, Red those Dead 2 is a game you love? I, both of them. I play both of them, yeah. Red you Dead played Dead. the Red Dead Redemption games wow. and I didn't yeah. know this? My be- my best friend growing up go. was a see, huge, see? huge nut. And I like the Dude, open I've, world idea. Oh, I put like 300 hours into Red Dead yeah. 2. I'm not I really you like the, I really like the open world idea and how in Red Dead, well, the first one like attracted me because I love like, the stories. Those I could, story. Oh, yeah, this the, the, well but, but I could I could I didn't have to do the story, right? Like GTA yeah. I've played because I don't have to do the story. I get law lo- I kind of get bored with that kind of stuff mm-hmm. uh with like the story stuff, but if I can go off running and like whatever. shooting and you know and yeah. then and then i could like a tank hold on. in the middle of the street <laughs> hold on now now i'm not doing it in a car and in and, and on on a street things that yeah. i know now i'm doing it on a horse right and in the middle of the woods super fun now so, <laughs> yeah. yeah you know and then the zombie part was amazing right and then oh, they and then nightmare. Yeah, I forgot about that. yeah forgot even about even that. even though it was just the same thing just zombies i was like this is this is the, this is what i dreamed about right red dead got me because like i said i'm a fidelity nut so stuff that's like that weird simulation type open world i go for like oh, yeah. tenfold like i love the fact that like i had to like wash my horse and you know stuff yeah, like exactly. that like, like yeah, that stuff him. really gets you, me you could only like, carry him. so much because <laughs> It would Everybody always thinks down. I'm a serial killer. They're like, you're weird. Like, right, I'm right. sitting there. I'm like, but it's so cool. Like, look, like, I have yeah. to brush him. Like, and, it was like, like the like world I said, is alive in a like, sense. Yeah. And know? like I said, my my always my problem with GTA or any Call of Duty game is like, where are they carrying everything? Right? You, you, all of a sudden, you go into a menu and you have like a machine gun, uh, all the all these other stuff. <laughs> but with Red Dead, yeah, it literally like was like weight Didn't limit, it? right? Yeah. Like you've you've or you're gonna be slower on the horse. Like exactly. did, the what what um who makes those games again? Um that's Rockstar. Rockstar. They 
They, well, they make they, GTA too. They yeah. make GTA. I know, though. I know, so, but, yeah, I know. They uh, just know. They know yeah. their demographic. That's a they public are, that knows their demographic. They know they exactly do. what they're. Yeah, doing. they yeah. they themselves they're absolutely genius. Like, no, rock they star. should have their own. If if and the Academy won't give them an award, <laughs> they need to make an award just for, for them. them. If anybody yeah. from Rockstar watches this, hey, right. I've got some stories. Right, right. <laughs> just so you know. It's we are true, not you know, sponsored by Rockstar it's to make sure. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, and it's so wild because they they do and they they make games so ahead of their time. I mean, I'll be honest. You think about it. I really don't think that like Red Dead Two needs necessarily. It's gonna get it, but it doesn't right, need a next gen update. Like on my console, it looks it's gorgeous, phenomenal. Like it's for the you know, it's absolutely hey, gorgeous. But know, I would I, like I just to see it. it. I can't, you okay? no, I, guy? I can't wait to see it, and I will buy it like 100. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, um, Ghost of Tsushima, um, their update yeah. uh, is very good. Now, here's the thing: Ghost is Ghost was later in the life of the PS4, so right. it doesn't benefit as much as Red Dead 2 probably would from a PS5 update. And the frame rates there, obviously, it, it makes it look great, but graphics look wise, it's not much, you know. Look but you. Uh, you know everything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you have to be on the team or something. Uh, yeah, no, it, and it, it's true. It's, <laughs> and it, you know, you you mentioned something I just want to say too. Like, yeah, you don't. I never realized the difference going from like the the Xbox One to the Series X and the frame and being like, holy crap, it's a whole different gaming experience. It's so a whole great. different like. So great. So I'm what I really it. can't wait for is the next gen, the built from the ground up PS5 Need for Speed. Oh. It's going to be a glorious Ooh. day that Ooh. that game lands Whoa. on my console and gets announced because man oh man <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just think, I don't think we're ready people a lot of times people we look get into that. yes look so at that beautiful. It's amazing. It's beautiful. oh my god beautiful beautiful I, yeah a lot of times we get so excited for like the adventure rpg style games for the next gen you know and all that stuff but i really think I'm you know we are really gonna start to see the line blurred when it comes to Sort of that that ultra realism style, yeah, like Red Dead and and uh, it's un, and, it's so and remarkable. Gran Turismo, like when we when we get the the PS5 Gran Turismo, it, it's gonna be insane. Oh, it blows yeah, Forza was just announced. And Forza looks. Yeah, beautiful. I was gonna say for you guys, it's it's Need for Speed. For me, yeah. I'm already I already got pre downloaded Forza nice. Five. And, <laughs> so, and, oh, were you always a PlayStation wait. person? <clears throat> I've, I'm a gamer. Like I've, 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 I've had spin. every everything. I've had everything. Yeah. I started out with an Atari. I have. I've had. Hey. Yeah. Oh. I've Nintendo. I've had Super Min Nintendo. Shaq bought me my Genesis. <laughs> That's wait, an odd I'm story. Like, wait, 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 can't just breeze by that. Shaq brought me an intent. Yes. Yeah, what? The, um, the Shaquille O'Neal, or is it some sort O'Neal. of different Shaquille? Right. Shaq. Uh, no, Shaq down the street from, from a You know, Shaq. Shaq. <laughs> the radio Shaq. Got it. Got it. Okay. No, um, no uh, I used to do uh, events, uh, toy drives uh, with uh, with Shaq. He did a, a toy drive out, out here in LA. You got to put some good words week. in for us, my friend. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I tell people all the time I've lived 10,000 lives, man. Um, when, when the last one that we did, um, I was giving out toys and I was just like, man, I was like, I really want a Sega. I really want one really bad. And I didn't think anyone heard me. I didn't think anybody was listening. Shit. Um, and he was, he was literally in the truck and I, we went home to Chicago and I had a Sega Genesis three for Christmas shine what? wrapped up brightly. <laughs> and, uh, what? yeah, so it was awesome. I hope you still have it. <laughs> Huh? Wow! Oh, it's uh, it. it's it's in storage somewhere. Yeah, it's in storage. In somewhere. storage it doesn't bunting. work. It doesn't work. I wish it did. <laughs> I, I I need to find a refurbisher for sure because I'm I want to put it in a in a casing. You know those arcade. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Like a shatter box. Or a shatter yeah, it'd be, it'd be, it it'd be amazing. It'd be amazing to get that. Yeah. Uh, but that's a that's a, you you really you've done you, you're I was I don't know I wasn't expecting all this. <laughs> I, wasn't. I, 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 I hope I hope I, I hope I did give you know a better variety than maybe expected. I yeah, always know like, oh, so today we were, I mean so it wasn't supposed to be this way today. Um we were supposed to, have to do an interview at five and my ceiling like I sent you the video. Right, yeah. Of I'm my ceiling just caving just in. Caving in so yeah, yeah, yeah. uh yeah. you know, that's a wonderful uh <laughs> yeah. That's a that's good times. But yes. Uh, anything in the anything in the works that you could talk about? 
Yeah, yeah um, you're allowed you know, long... to talk about. Not yeah, don't get yourself I, in trouble. Right, right. 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 Well, I mean, I mean as, the 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 NDA for for DC was the the <laughs> the oh, one that I had. Yeah. <laughs> was it, right. that was it. But now that's years. good. good. Like, I can't seriously. believe that. I mean, when I tell you, I had so many times. There was times where I was like, literally, um, there was one point uh, I got into a a little tiff with someone on on Twitter, and they're like, they're like, yeah, like you aren't even, you haven't even done any any voiceover lately, blah, blah, blah. And I like, I couldn't even say anything. And I'm just like, oh, God. Like, oh. gotcha. <laughs> now I'm like, oh. but yeah. But, um, but no, it's so <laughs> funny. Um, yeah, I have that coming up with the part two. I am also in part two. Yes. Yep. Um, yes. So so that will be out in August. And um, yeah, I have a lot of stuff in the works, man. Um, I am taking my art very seriously um uh coming up so uh a gallery is in the works uh here in really? la um and you know an instagram and a website and all that kind of oh, stuff yeah. so that we can really get that moving i did a collaboration with a london-based uh, clothing designer uh by the name of rareware um and they caught wind of my art and i had jackets and t-shirts and stuff with my art on it and did really really well and you know stuff like that is like that weird space that like everybody who's like an actor in entertainment space i like doing stuff like that so i didn't want to like be jaded off that but right, everybody right. has always you know really loved you know um my art so i've just like i said i've been taking it seriously yeah. i also have been recording a spoken word album like i said I, i'm into poetry and um i have been writing since before quarantine and i've just been sitting on a lot of stuff i've recorded stuff even and just haven't released it so oh, yeah. um i think now it's uh yeah it's time to basically sort of uh, take that seriously <laughs> and yeah. uh, and so uh that will hopefully be out before the end of the year that's my yeah. goal uh, that's um I, yeah 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 i'm in the works um developing uh my my production house um so i have a lot of um pre-production um um uh, thing or st sorry projects in pre-production that i'm working on right now um some animated stuff i it's weird because i've gotten so many submissions for animated things and i and it's so weird now that i'm in the production side of this stuff um but it's uh it's it's great uh, to, to to develop these ideas from new uh fresh faces that have yeah. just amazing amazing ideas i mean when you guys see and catch wind of the stuff that i am working on uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's some next level stuff, and I can't I can't wait. We're we're getting some con I got some concept art back recently, yeah. um, so we're 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 heavy uh, in in the uh, in the heights when it comes to developing that stuff. We're right on the cusp of of seeing um, a couple of um, uh, production companies. So yeah, well, let us know. Let us know when there you're... for that. But uh, yeah. yeah, let us know when some of the stuff's coming out, so we can uh, maybe we can well, check course, it out early or check it out and. Uh, give you a little, of course. Get, get a I'm, review I'm, for you. Yeah, I'm filming um my reboot to, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Low Down Dirty Shame with Keenan Ivory Wayans it's, uh, and Jada Pinkett. It's an old sort of buddy action flick. I, I think I have seen this. Yeah, Um. so I'm doing a, I, I wrote a reboot short film version. Um. And so oh. I'm trying to get the Wayans involved in some Sound kind of way and have them bless yeah. them. I love, I love, love, love them. Um. And uh, yeah, it was just some, a passion project that I wrote you know during during quarantine oh, that i'm good. doing and shooting now so that's next up but other than that i can't talk about anything else unfortunately trust me there are things coming on the animated side on the on-camera side um as well other business ventures as well so uh i'm okay. excited this this year uh this pandemic year was a good sort of um uh year to refocus my energy uh yeah. to to other things so, yeah. quick um this is just for me i don't care of if anyone else hears it or not yeah. uh i am i told you actually i'm a huge supernatural fan oh yeah did you get to meet jensen ackles <laughs> i did not unfortunately uh, i i wish i i wish i could have i uh, honestly he's again, another one remember the my will smith story okay it's him and will smith right uh, gotcha uh, that's your that's your free those, those are, are those my are two your, man. Your and if, yeah yeah and if they wanted <laughs> to be best friends I would do it for free, for free. Um, but yeah, that's so that's yeah. Because yeah, I mean, yeah. so he could, finally I, got to play Batman, which I've been waiting for for years. Because um, I, I've was, heard that that was a thing. I didn't he even talked know that about people it. were really trying to to have. That yeah, happen. yeah. Nice. He, I mean, he voiced Red Hood 
back in the day. Right. Like right, a couple right, of years yeah. ago, he voiced, uh, yeah. did Red Hood. And um, he just got that like dark gravelly, you know. Yeah, he's got, he's got a great, he's got yeah, a great, yeah. pure, yeah, the great uh, Batman pure tone. Voice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So when he, when, when it was announced, Long Halloween. So that's why when you said yes to coming on, I was like, oh, this is just like, per- this is perfect. <laughs> Um, he's like, I'm that much closer to Jensen. <laughs> that much closer to Jensen. His, his oh agent wouldn't gosh. even answer. <laughs> um, no, but you know, but not, not that's not why. But yeah. when you said you were in it, I was like, it would be nice to talk about it with at least somebody, right? Like, yeah, I'd like to talk about these stories because we're huge into that stuff here, and that's what we do is uh, we yeah. see movies, we talk about them, and we love to talk about them with the people that make them. Um, because who better did it? to talk about it with right exactly. um, what before you go before you go because we're approaching two hours went a little bit longer than than i said but um so, someone did ask it earlier mm-hmm. what is your favorite marvel or dc movie if ah. you had to choose one wow oh, we'll, we'll leave it on a, a nice we'll leave it on marvel. an icebreaker of course um well, my favorite oh man, that's a tough one. But I would say I would say my favorite DC oh man. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna go with DC first because it's well wait, is it either or or can it only be one from both? I think they asked I think he asked for one for both, but one for each. Okay. If you want do whatever you want, man. Okay, yeah, no, let's do one for each. That makes it easier. One for each is great. Um, favorite DC flick right now? Oh, man. You know, I've done a lot of rewatching uh, recently. And if it's not, I know I'm missing something because I feel like I'm going to say this and then somebody's going to be like, but what about? And I'm going to be like, right, oh, right. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> um, Okay, and also what what is included is is are we including Nolan Universe in the Anything. DC? You know, yeah, yeah DC. Anything okay, under yeah. the DC okay, umbrella okay, because. Okay. But, but, but I will if you say, say this: the Dark I will, Knight, It's a cop out. I will ask you separately what your favorite <laughs> DC animated film is. Oh, oh um, so so yeah, so we'll keep the live action and. and well, I will say I will say that my DC live action is either. The original Michael Keaton Batman. Okay. Or you're gonna hate me, Dark Knight. (laughs) 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 Um um, why uh animated, that was that's I wasn't expecting that, but that's mask, of course. Uh mask of fantasy, of course. Of course. course. Um and um if it's Marvel. Um, don't worry, you don't have to do Marvel animation because they're all terrible. Right, they're all bad. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would <laughs> say, oh man, that's ah, that's so tough. You know, I have ones that I know are good, and then there's ones that are like I know are bad, but are I still like. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, I honestly, you know, I really love Blade. I honestly hey, really love. That's, that's, that really, wasn't an really answer I was expecting. Um, that's awesome. I, yeah, I really love Blade. I think that as a film, it just it 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 did exactly what it needed to do. Yeah, and I think that Marvel hasn't done that in a very long time. Yeah, um, you know, and I think that I missed movies with that kind of that sense of direction, and especially that sense of direction that felt personal. Um, you know, we have gotten so big and bombastic. Um, that Blade truly felt like a movie that had big elements to it, you know, as far as the blood God, but it was a personal villain. It was a personal thing for Blade. It felt like he was going through this personally. And um, yeah, I miss, I miss superhero films where uh, we, we had that. I think that was the, one of the best things that I love about the character of Spider-Man because a lot of his villains are personal and that's Mm. why I love the amazing run for amazing spider-man um yeah. with uh with garfield, Andrew garfield because yeah. it felt more personal so <clears throat> yeah, um in that aspect yeah that's blade is probably gonna be my favorite and yes whoever that is saying that quote right there that's probably my favorite piece of dialogue so <laughs> you got it uh, the nail on the head. i mean <laughs> Mar- marvel's marvel's redoing blade but it's pg-13 
And it, but it's with Mah- Mahershala. Ali. Mahershala. Yeah. No, it's a catch twenty two. It like is it. a catch twenty two, man. It's like, like uh, you say one, you say the PG thirteen part, and you're like, nope, not no. gonna work. And then yeah, you're like, oh, I, you got Mahershala Ali, and they're like, uh, in, in my work? mind, in my mind, I I'm gonna be watching a Netflix show. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Because yeah. that you know okay. that's really the 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 range I feel is what they're shooting for. If they're saying Blade is PG thirteen, then really you're telling me that this belongs on Netflix, you right. know. And so if I, I think yeah. if I go see it with that mindset, then I I probably won't be that disappointed. <laughs> but if I do, then <laughs> you know what though you, yeah. you, you it's not a bad way to look at it because I think uh, a lot of people are already like expecting it to fail. Yeah. But then you know. I don't want it to fail. I just want it to. Yeah. I want it to be focused. You know, again, like that's my biggest thing with Marvel. He's got big shoes to, to fill. He's got yeah. huge shoes to fill. What I mean, I mean, and Wesley's still alive. And you know, that's and what I'm he, saying. Like, you know, he's <laughs> he's still you know, kicking around there. Right. Somewhere. You know, and, 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 and they're not that far in age either. No, like in an ability, it's not like it's not like they. It, I, in my head, if you got Trevante Rhodes, if you got Michael B. Jordan as blade then i kind of understand you're right. going for that younger fresher blade sure you to keep him for yeah, right i'm like yeah. she was like older than wesley was when he first started. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, what? right 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 you know um you know for me but again you know i trust their vision um has a lot to do with the multiverse and Right now, everybody's enjoying that. So we just have to, you know, go yeah. along for the ride at this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just move yeah. with the machine, as they yeah. say. I'm um, waiting for, for someone to trust me um, for, for my video game adaptation flicks. So um, I want to take The Division um, because I think I can turn ooh. that into a Oscar flick. So Netflix, isn't yeah. Netflix already doing it? They're I'm supposedly doing. supposed to do it and blah, blah. It's been gestating right. for forever. Jake Gyllenhaal has the rights with New Line. Just give it to me, oh. Jake. Hey, like, he said I got the perfect story already laid out. We got you, man. You, you need you right yeah. here. I'll reach <laughs> out. Up and running. There you yeah. go. Uh, I was gonna say too. That's a yeah. That's a great thing because and you know there I, so many of these games. I, I've always said like, why the heck isn't Red Dead Redemption two or like a series? That should be like. Right. Well, Last of Us like, is oh, coming. We're getting Last of Us. I know so. Last of Us. Yep. Yep. So, and yeah, there, we just it's some, great uh, so far. Great cast. We just got some uh, ex- like exclusive casting details on that too, and um. I mean, I don't really know like what it, what I'm looking for, you know, because I don't right. play the game. Um, but uh, according to Austin, everything sounded pretty similar. I'm right? loving it. Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. sounds um, like a focus on the first one as the as the uh, the title character. <laughs> I am all for video game adaptions. It's just and and in my mind, <clears throat> I'm not the best judge because I but, like yeah. Assassin's Creed. You did yeah. like right, Assassin's and Creed. no one no one told me ah! that that was a terrible movie. <laughs> It's absolutely no one, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I still have not made it through that fl- film. And yeah. I, I honestly, you know, and I was really for it too, but I, I heard that it doesn't, it doesn't just, um, it doesn't capture the essence. It doesn't. That, that's the, the thing is I don't know the game. So I don't know, like, yeah. I don't, and I like that, that movie world of Warcraft. I like oh, that I, movie. <laughs> and I come out of the theater yeah. and my brother's talking to this other kid who they, you know, they'd play the game and they were like, that was fucking God awful. And I was like, well, I didn't mind it that much. <laughs> but whatever. Right. Uh, no, okay. I get it. I mean, you know, I, I definitely understand that there, I mean, I loved ready player one. So, Oh, oh, oh yeah. So people, uh, yeah. So <laughs> dude, for the two seconds that I saw the Spartans and master chief, I think I literally got I was going like, to say ah! to you. I was going to say this to you earlier. Now I have to, cause you brought it up and cause it, jumped out of my mind earlier because yeah. by the way i found what i was looking for it was tacked to the to the board so i you know just in case anyone wanted to know um <laughs> from the beginning ready player one uh-huh. now that's a that is a do, you guys play video games and stuff i always like to ask gamers this do you think we'll ever get to a place in the world where that becomes a reality it looks like we might be headed. Are you, in are you saying ever, or are you saying in our in our lifetime, we'll, we'll call it like lifetime. In our foreseeable um, not in our foreseeable lifetime. I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, I think, I think, three hundred fifty plus years. Jesus, you don't think we'll already be on some other planet by then? We might be actually. Uh, no, I think. Well, well, here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Our technology and our minds are there. Our resources mm-hmm. aren't. And until we figure out how to replace our resources in order to further our technology, we'll never get there. 
So oh, yeah. that's really our thing is that we need to figure out first how to get the resources back up. Whatever is the new fuel, whatever is the new energy, whatever is the new carbon, whatever is the new, um, you know, all of that. That's the new copper because we need new new things for chips. You know, that stuff needs to happen first. Then we can have. Ah, see, yeah. I'm a I'm a I'm a green guy myself, right? So, um, <laughs> I, I would love them to replace, uh, you know, carbon yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I'm all for it as long as it gives me flying cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but Gary, yeah, I mean, we'll have to have runner, you just, back. Yeah. We'll have to have you back sometime very soon. Oh man, definitely. Yes. You guys, you guys are awesome. You know, I definitely understand. This was fun. Know, this I, is I, yeah, yeah, this was for me. This was a. I, I, I'll say right now, this by far was my favorite interview I've ever done. This was a That's blast. Awesome. I, um, I'm glad. I'm glad. I, I really hope you come back, back, man. This was. Hey, for whenever me. you guys. And I, you know, I love to, you know, premiere some stuff on here or whatever, you know, just let me know, yeah. what, you know, um, even if we, you know, do something uh, later in the year when I have uh, my, my, my poetry or something out, you know, that'd be yeah. great. Sure. Whatever you guys want to do. Love um, that, man. Even if you guys are wanting to talk shop about a, a Marvel flick or something when it comes out or some Zack Snyder stuff, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> love it. We're going to get you an audition it, for uh, some, of his, some of his movies, man. Hey, yeah, Zach man. has a, uh, has a, uh, an animation the moon that Netflix one. coming. The, Listen, the, uh, I, mentioned no, no. Very, I mentioned very briefly that Lieutenant Pierce should have his own spinoff. And the writer for Long Halloween was like, hmm, I'm thinking of that, responded. And I look, all I'm saying is I'm ready. Oh, <laughs> Whatever you, you guys are. I love <laughs> it. This. I this love this. Fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much, though. Oh, no, no, of course. And uh, and for everyone out there in the stratosphere, uh, whether you're listening or well, listening in the future or watching in the future, uh, we do have a description. Uh, the link is in the description, I should say. Um, please donate to our fund. Uh, we're going to be starting a tribute fund from a mother. Uh, the goal is to help one woman per year for the next five years and then try to double it uh, every five years. Um help them beat breast cancer uh it means a lot to me so if yeah. you don't mind donating if you have a couple extra dollars uh and if you don't if you can't donate maybe you could share the link so uh someone else can uh it means a lot to me uh and i, I really do thank everybody we have so many more interviews to go this month uh so many more people to talk to um but it's hard to beat this right it's hard to beat having this much fun who 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 said you couldn't uh do what you love and 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 smile at the same time. You I can, mean, right. work and smile at the same time. There you go. Um, I mean, but it's also do what you love. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. But thank you, everyone. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, uh, become a member. All the description, all the stuffs in the description. You guys know what it is. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. And thank, thank you, you especially you. To, everybody to in the comments everybody. for sure. Thank you guys for your questions and everything. Yeah, yeah, but it's especially a thank you to you, Gary. Uh, Gary, yeah. where can they find you? Uh, I mean, the Twitter links, right? Yeah, I am. Um, I'm Twitter. on uh, on every social media um, yeah. when it comes to uh, Twitter and Instagram. It's at Gary L Gray. Make sure that Gray is spelled with an A Y, not an E. Um, uh, and when it comes, I, yeah, I it. when it comes to it. right, when it comes to TikTok, uh, I just got on there. I am Mister Mister Dot. Or yeah, Mr. Dot Gary L. Gray on there. Um, and I am on Facebook at Gary L. Gray. So Hell all yeah. of my stuff there. You can reach me on anything. I'm most active on Twitter. Um, and uh and uh yeah. Hit all me right. up. I always I usually respond uh even to DMs if I can sift through all of the uh promotional um, asking me uh, for, you know, shake weights and stuff like that. Repost some goo to get stuff out of your cup holder. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? But uh, uh, yeah. People ask saying, you to do that stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I get it every, every, oh, every God. second. <laughs> so, oh, my God. I feel, I feel so bad for you. But like I said, I don't, I don't mind. A lot of, a lot of my DMs, though, are people who are, you know, have the questions about acting and stuff like that. So that's why I do look. Yeah through my DMs, you know, um, it just sucks that I do have some, some crap in there, but yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I do, I do sift through and answer as much as I can. Beautiful. That's awesome. All right, guys, until next time. Till next time.